the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board's order. We start with the roll call. Yes. Aaron Angel? Here. Scott Conlin? Here. Jeff Ellenbogen? Is not present. Manoj Gangwar? Is not present. Paige Lewis? Here. Nicholas Novello? Here. Dan Olson? Here. And Council Liaison Tim Waters? Here. We'll go ahead with approval of the agenda. Are there any changes to the agenda? If not, uh, I would like to have a motion to approve the agenda. I move that we approve the agenda as it is. Thank I will you. second. Great. All in favor? Great. Uh, now we'll move to approval of the previous month's minutes. So does anyone have any changes to the minutes that were shared? If not, we can get a motion to approve the minutes as presented. I move to approve the minutes as presented. Thank you. Any second? I'll second that. All in favor? Anyone opposed? I'm okay, so we can go first to the public invited to her. Mm -hmm. Can you have that? Are you looking it up? Uh, no, there's, there's some that still want to. There's still one? Pass it down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we can start. John didn't lose last oh, time. So if you just share your name and address, uh, and you have. Minutes. Okay, my name is Jonathan Robbie. Um, I'm on 506 Flicker Avenue. Um, I'm coming just to two reasons to say thank you for having such an amazing golf courses in Longmont. We use them all the time, and uh, all, all around this whole area is really appreciating that. We also hope that uh, you guys can also look into more um, frisbee golf courses mm -hmm. opportunities because I think that's becoming a really popular thing for young people as well as. That's old guys. Um, uh, I had kind of a, a bad experience at the rec center uh, the other day. It was rather disheartening. It was in and around the volleyball that's going on. It's an interesting problem because it's a, um, uh, a really great thing that turned into a really not so great thing. Uh, there's a new youth volleyball league at the rec center that's becoming quite successful and it promoted a lot of young, new younger players wanted to play more. Um, there's a, if you look in the, uh, the catalog, it says drop in volleyballs on Tuesdays, and I think Fridays, uh, or, or two, Monday, Mondays in the mornings, and then Wednesday, Fridays in the afternoon. And um, as one of the coaches for some of the youth volleyball uh, players, one of the best teams, we um, had, had four or five kids from the group ask if they can go and join and then I would take them there. And so for about a whole month, all the way through the month of October, we went and played on Wednesdays and we had a really good time. The kids got really quite good. They met the other adult players. And we went on Friday uh, and they got kicked out, just flat out. You're not old enough to play, you have to leave. And this is because some of the other players were there said, this is adult now. And as a, as a parent, it was like, well, there's a sign right there on the wall that says uh, drop in volleyball, and that's all it says. And then there's a thing in the, in the uh, um, yeah, in the, and it's all it says drop in volleyball. So I asked, well, what's the policy? How does that work? Because there seems to be lots of kids playing basketball that are under the age of 16. How come they don't have to leave? But just the volleyball kids. So there seems to be some application of policies or some misclarity in terms of why kids should be getting kicked out of the rec center during a drop-in game, when actually what's happening is that an outside adult volleyball group has sort of taken over that night, and is now <clears throat> making sure that the other kids are either not welcomed, and I have a whole long video that I took, and some of the kids uh, replied and gave me a video of their of their feelings about this, and they were, they were pretty put out by the whole thing, it was kind of sad. So what I hope is, and what I hope is, the positive part of this is that these kids really want to play, um, and that there was a whole side with nothing going on. And we asked, well, could you just put up two nets? It's not that hard. Just put up another net in the open gym 
space way on the left over there. Um, so that there's enough place for all the people that are showing up now to play. Because it's making the adults mad because they're having to play with kids they don't want to play with. And the kids still want to play. And there's some of us adults who also want to play with the kids. And so we need, we need there to be two nets up regularly um, on those open nights. Um, I did not get a good response when I brought this up to the Rexeter themselves. And their whole statement was, we don't have the staff to do that. How's that positive? Seems pretty easy to put up another volume on that. So I would I would hope that uh, there's some clarity on when you bring and you are uh, bringing kids who are in the 14 to below 16 ages that that when they have someone who's being their supervisor they not get kicked out because they have a supervisor and that is the policy I do believe and I don't think people at the rec center know how to handle that. What happens when they do have a, you know, someone bringing them to go play? Um, that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. So Jeff isn't here tonight, and we generally, like, I don't know if you yeah. say anything or if you'll just take that back sure. to him. Or... Well, that's it's for you, you what guys want me to speak to that? Okay. Sure. Yeah, okay. Jeff does use it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I'm not sure the, the procedure here for that one. So I'm Ben Wagner, I'm the Acting Assistant Recreation Manager, and um, made aware of your email I think today oh, okay. and uh, made sure that we sent it out to everybody here so they were able to take a look at that and what limited resources lots of need okay, that's that's kind of a simple thing there how things went down I'd like to work on that but what I would really like to do is just talk to you about um, with you and Chris Crone, who oversees the rec center directly, yeah. um, um, what the opportunities are, and to make sure that we're trying to accommodate as many people as we can with the resources we've got. Totally great. So, yeah. So I'd like you to contact me, and we can talk about this more. Yeah, no problem. Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. On the good news side, we're developing a park in Southeast Longmont that has kids disc golf. Oh. It's made shorter holes intentionally made for littler kids. And then we're finishing up in the spring renovations to Lou Miller Park, which is one of the prime disc golf courses around the uh, city. So yeah. we run into some supply chain issues with that project, but uh, we should have that buttoned up by May, June of 2023. That's great. Okay. So it's good to hear that we're still, people are still interested in disc golf because we still have some out there. For sure. Good. Hey, Jonathan, I'll send you an email. Oh, okay. Very good. Okay. Happy? Um, hi, my name is Abby. Um, I live way up on the top of Magnolia, um, County Road 68J. Um, and I wish parks were open and inclusive um, of all people at any time and prioritize people's interests, such as uh, disc golf or just outside area instead of uh, wiggle ball courts in areas that don't people don't really know that. Um, I also would like to speech, speak for a friend that is not here today. Um, Sasha would like to say, I like visiting parks at night to unwind, but the park next to me is closed at sunset. Okay. Thank you. Megan. Um, I'm Megan. I live at 2228 Lift Rose Lane. And I just want to say that um, parks are really important to me because sometimes uh, school gets too much and I just have to get out and get away. So I either take my bike or I take my dog or just myself alone and I just go to a park to try or any um, hiking trail that I can find to get away. And sometimes I bring a book with me and I can sit out there for a while. But it's getting winter, so I might not do that um, for a couple of months. But the parks and the um, trails are very important to me, and a lot of other people that I know from school that do the same. Thing. Thank you. Lila? Hi, I'm Lila Clay. I'm, I live around. Uh, 751 West Hemlock Circle, uh, down in Louisville, right in the middle of Russia Fire Happened. 
I have always used parks as a sort of cool down space. It's always been where I can go if family or friends or really anything gets too much to just sit there and enjoy peace and quiet and a sort of freedom from any other stresses or anxieties or anything like that. I would really like it if more parks prioritized just having some open space and native plants and just peacefulness instead of all just being like sport parks or sport fields or fields for specific activities. I obviously still think that we need a lot of those, but I feel like there should be more parts of the parks that are just, you know, peaceful. Thank you. Jesse? My name is Jesse, and I live at 137 Casper Drive in uh, uh, downtown Lafayette. And I use parks to go and de stress as well. I usually love sitting at the edge of the lake and sometimes just yelling into their business. <laughs> Thank you. What I want to know about signed up for Saturday night at Thanks so much for taking time to come and share your thoughts with us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Just stay as long as you want to stay warm and bail when you can. Okay, or when you cut it to Okay, okay. okay. so we'll tell this public invited to be heard and move to old business. That mean? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, beach recreation facility. So my understanding, and um, Council Member Walsh can maybe help me with this, is that well, the, the, the next discussion concerning the new tax is supposed to happen kind of pretty quick. I, believe. I, I think I think on the 29th of November. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's kind of where that sits. Um, I will update as far as internally. Um, I hope to have an RFP out from purchasing uh, for the new feasibility study and an update to the parks um, program master plan uh, this week, next week, um, at some point here. We're pretty close and get that going in January or some of our goal to get one of the companies in here. So that's where we're at with that. And do you have any questions on what remind me what we don't know size of this budget for the uh, for the proposal of the RFP uh, one hundred and fifty thousand for the feasibility study and forty thousand for the master plan update. Okay, so they're combined into one because we expect the same. It's the same. Company. And the timing is still a ballot issue a year from now. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so we're hoping. For what I'm trying to project is that we have this information back. By the end of spring, so May. So this is like for a few months, is it? Yeah. You know, well, by the time this gets done, it's January, and we got to be ready by April. Well, I'm hoping to have it done by May. We get information that council can use okay. uh, to, as we formulate. This is in my my mind as we formulate what the what the wording would look like for immigration facility. So, yeah. And as part of this, the, the proposal is community meetings and talk to interest groups yep. or the whole bit in yep. those yep. three or four ish months. Got yeah, it. When we, yes. And so if you remember the last time, it would be certainly similar to that. We want it to be as robust as possible, getting to as many groups as possible to get the feedback okay. for um, what people are looking for at this point. Okay, good. I just want to be clear when I advertise to folks who yeah. bugged me that's there this spring is it when it's happening, right? Okay, so thanks. Yeah. What will the outreach to uh, what will the outreach to groups that don't have access have less government access be? I don't have an answer for you right now. Okay. That would be something we'll work with. Yeah, I really I mean that's community. something I think is really important. I, I agree as many as many folks as yeah. If this group has ideas, it's great, but we do have a, you know, a actually fully filled out. They have all the positions filled for our public information group right now. So um, we finally have people that are kind of representing stuff, and I know there'll be someone tasked to help with this piece. So they'll take it on the professional level, but I, I think sometimes you know, that 
um, kind of can miss some pieces that we pick up in anything <clears throat> like this too. And we'll certainly be talking with our internal departments um, that are in touch with as many different uh, community groups as possible to try to get the word out when the opportunity is there. Could you send that RFP to, or have someone send it around to us when it goes out? Yeah. Just so we can get Cool, thanks. Directly. That'd be awesome. And then, so it's the- Should check with purchasing on that, Ben? <laughs> yep. Uh, might we have to wait until after the contract awarding? Yeah, sure. I don't, well, I don't I'm sure I think it's an RFP. I, I think, <laughs> oh, it's yeah, government rules yeah, different nonprofits. I, I'm not sure. Oh, well, you can tell us, it's the tell same us thing. where it's posted. Or yeah, I can get on the bin net. Yeah, I can share it with you. Rocky Mountain bin net. Yeah. Yeah. Rocky, yeah. Rocky Mountain bin net. Yeah. There's some version of that that, yeah. yeah. Yes. You can just now, let us know. When the process starts, then it becomes right. Yeah, see what Any other questions on that? Thanks, Ben. That's, it's been a complicated piece. There's been a lot of moving parts. There's been a lot of information. There's been a lot of deadlines coming go. So um, Jeff and Ben have done a great job of trying to stay on top of this for us. We've definitely been involved in the process, but they've taken the lead. And when that comes before our council on the 29th, what will, what will the discussion be then? Well, first of all, I'm not sorry. As soon as I, think, as soon as I think I know when something's <laughs> happening, it changes. So, yeah. uh, I was in a meeting earlier today where Harold was in the meeting, and I looked at Harold said the 29th. <laughs> I think he said yes, but you know, there's a there's some things that could change. <clears throat> and I'm just assuming that Sandy Cedar will play a significant role in terms of the public engagement process. And questions like, what is that plan, and, and what are the segments of the population? Uh, and what's the approach, and, and how much access with folks who you know, aren't typically engaged with what the city's doing. Those will all be, quite, there's no, I have no doubt, those are going to be central to the, to the engagement process. I'm certain there'll be questions about polling as well. Um, I don't know if you remember that the last time we did this, um, the, the approach to polling that we took, and, um, and what we learned from that. Uh, but I'm certain all that will be part of the package, and whatever we see it, you know, we'll, we'll bring the questions. I'm certain Sandy will be, if it's Sandy who's doing the presentation, it may be somebody from the communication staff. <clears throat> they'll address uh, most of those topics. They can anticipate what the questions are going to be. I'm certain they'll address them uh, at the top, and then, you know, we'll get into it. So. And just a reminder, at some point we've talked about this, but at the appropriate time, it'd be good to have guidance for proud members about how they can engage in support of, you know, if it moves forward to be a ballot initiative, what we can do and in what capacity. Um, project management approach, do we want to move on to that? Yeah, I can kick that off and Steve's here to kind of- Can I say one more thing, David, just yeah. before we leave this? <clears throat> Paige, I don't remember if you were in the room uh, when when we were in the process of engaging the public or anticipating the last uh, ballot question, right, for the preliminaries. So Dan was in the room, as I, I'm, I'm certain. But we had a room full of hockey advocates that night. You remember this? Mm -hmm. I remember the yeah. pool one in particular. Yeah, it, was no, it, it was that, was that package. Right. There was, was one that one night right. when yeah. we had a we had a number of it was standing room only in this room, and it was the ice community that was here. Oh yeah, you're right. And we kind of went around the room and you know what the expectations were or the you know the best hopes of people. At the end of that conversation, um, uh, I didn't hear a single word during that conversation about. Anybody having reached out to the school district, there was just no knowledge of what the school district would super support. The assumption was that they would support a hockey program. It turns out, not so, not so much. I think that's one of the reasons the school district, you know, kind of kept us at arm's length. But I did ask the question that evening, so what, what's your plan to get behind this? Well, what role are you going to play in helping to design and, and roll out a campaign? And the response was, don't lay that on us. Right? My question was, well, who do you think is going to do that? Mm -hmm. uh, the staff isn't going to do that. <clears throat> Your council members can't once we put it on a ballot. <clears throat> and, and in my opinion, part of the reason that failed by 11 points or whatever is there was almost none of a, no campaign. 
right? Right. There was a small effort. Sharon O'Leary and a group got together, and there were you know, like eight and a half by eleven yard signs or something, very small yard signs. But there was no really no campaign strategy. There was no messaging committee. There was no fundraising to get behind this. So you, when you ask the question rhetorically. What's a role for crab members? Well, that's not gonna, why I asked. Yeah. <laughs> there, there, there will be many. Uh, and it's one thing, you know, there'll, there'll be constraints on what you can do as a committee in terms of campaigning. There will be no constraints on what you can do as individuals or your, your ability to write letters to the editor or show up and make comment for any public invited to be heard. Somebody's going to have to provide leadership as well, both on, well, on a campaign committee and all of that entails. Okay. Sorry. No, I think that's yeah, great. I think it's, that's a, it's a probably good hand off between staff and this group as we become, you know, just providers of information. You really get to push this out in the community for the interests that you're really here representing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have no idea what that. And I feel like last time I didn't really know what role we could play. I mean, I was new. Board. No, and the whole we, we me, and we dropped the, we. I talked to several different groups, but they were already in the pool folks and the hockey folks, but yeah. we didn't broaden our scope right. enough by well, a long shot. And, and this when, one has potential to be pretty broad. Correct. What's in, what ends up being in it. So. And pretty big. <laughs> well, and the 20 year ago when we got the rec center built, I can recall being there with my kids. And we're putting things on maps, and here's what we're going to design. I mean, it was huge. It was yeah. at the senior center, the yeah. old version of the senior center. Yeah, yeah. And it was awesome. And there was, I mean, a room, for, there was 200 people yeah, in the room with kids all the way to elderly folks. And it was huge. And, I mean, these people are all talking about it. And I didn't see that at all. That, that, well, what was that then? We'll, we'll do that again. We'll do that again. Yeah. We, we did that after the money was already approved for the rec center. Right. So we okay. Process, well, so what the rec center is going to be, there will uh, be a process that we go okay. through for that sure. after the bonding or well, we something along those lines, lines ahead of time to get to that. Yeah, point, that's you a, know. actually that sounds like because when people see themselves in something potentially, right? Two thousand nineteen. Yeah. Like yeah thank you. Right. That makes sense because it'll be four years with next yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, David, I would suggest you and Jeff maybe talk about that because that's not anything I anticipate before the ballot. Because that takes staff time and money. We wouldn't yeah. have a consultant on, on task to lead that process for us until after we have it. It makes sense what you say that we yeah. did it after the we money, after. is it? Because we had a hard cap. Here's what we get to spend, and you yeah. know, what are you going to fit well, in? People are buying, buying, and somehow and that got and folks things. excited. Yeah. And maybe that's a before the issue this time mm -hmm. to get, again, folks excited, or this is what we're visualizing, or I don't know. I can't well, imagine that it would cost very much money to get out, get some big, huge pieces of paper. That it's not. It paper. just takes effort. It's the consultants us or the folks. cost estimates and right. these the analyses and things that that costs. Yeah. And well, time. I think one of my expectations of the consultant that we're going to get for a feasibility study is we're doing a feasibility on something. Right. And they've got to get feedback right. on what that thing is, and so. Oh, the meetings that get yeah, to that I don't, point, know, yes. I don't know if it'll be as granular necessarily as that, but you need to know what the what the new rec center is. Yeah, we need to get enough folks involved then. To, or at least have that idea. Right. That, so when we when we take that forward to council, that here's what here's what the proposed package is from staff, the community, and this this company that that we believe we need. And well, to your point, Paige, I think the we're looking for something broader. Last time it was competitive pool and ice. And so those two groups were heavily engaged in no one else, you know, as it turns but, out. I mean, could, there's a lot of conversations. Right. right. We're anyway. going to do better this time. Yes, I agree. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you will keep us in the loop as too. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to project management capacity. Great. I will kick this off here. Um, this is a conversation that really started that as I talked to this group in the community about um, us getting parks built, getting parks renewed, and really the, the neighbors and HOAs would call and say, when's that park that was supposed to be built going to get built? And um, I think I was pretty open to this group that to make sure it was known that when my part was getting that done, I felt that we needed to get some additional staff to do that. We took that through the budget process and that, didn't that did not happen. Um, community and council members kind of then ask, well, how are we going to make this happen? And I, I think as we went through this process, one of the things that um, I'd like to start out is that 
Um, Harold has really been looking at where we're at and what we need and what we've been doing and why that wasn't working and what other opportunities are out there. So we've had a chance to spend some time in a room with Harold and Joni and um, Valerie, I was going to say Scott. Scott, our purchasing person, to say what, what have we been doing in the past that maybe can be done better now. And part of that is capacity, but also is process too. And we've been really looking at how we can do a better job of you know, using what we have, but also then looking and identifying needs as we go through this process. So that's really not off the table, but there really is some, are some pieces that um, Harold's have been supportive in. Can we change process? Are there different ways of doing things? So if you would like to see eight parts, large trail segments, large projects really get completed in the, in the next five years. Um, so with the past we had with Steve and Kathy and Danielle taking on some of that, that, that work, um, that was a challenge. We couldn't figure out how to quite get there. Now we're down Kathy, so it's um, really kind of pushing that. But um, Steve has gone out and gone to some trainings that you probably talked about a little bit uh, as far as design build. But we've also gone back to Harold and said, here's what we think we can do, uh, but we probably will need some additional support to get this done. So Steve's done a pretty good job of, I think, making one page. We actually had a full board <laughs> set up here with like uh, pages, pages and pages <laughs> of stuff here. So I'll let Steve kind of walk you through this. But again, I just want to make sure you know that even though at this point we did those positions uh, from Harold on down, uh, there is a definite desire um, and direction to move getting parked projects done in this eight and eight as Steve will talk about, or eight and five as Steve will talk about, does not mean we're dropping yeah. the same brain 13 that Danielle's working It's not dropping Lou Miller that Steve's working on. Um, so we'll be working on other projects as we're going through this as well. So, Steve, did you need one of those for yourself? No, I've got one. You can share too. Yeah, that's fine. Because I have to see things that's fine. That's fine. Uh, so thanks, David. So yeah, so as, as you guys are aware, the way we've been historically been doing projects is what's called a design bid build project. We hire a designer, we identify a project, we hire a designer, we go through a public process, we go to city council, make sure they're okay with the concept plan, master plan, whatever you want to call it, and then we design the whole thing using staff time and, and, and other consultants, and then we take that package, put it out to a, a construction bid, and these days the process from when the design is done to when the contractor is under construction is typically about five months with the whole bidding process and then awarding process, purchasing has, has staffing resource challenges as well. And so getting the contracts through the city attorney's office takes time, the attorney's office has resource challenges. So um, that, and then from that point of when you award the contract, depending on the size of the project, you're looking at 10 to 20 months roughly for a, for a construction contract, depending on the scope. Um, what we've been finding out and doing a little bit of digging is that the design build process, which we've used minimally before, we did it for the skate park at San Antonio Ranch, we used a design build contractor, and uh, but that was a sub under a general contract, so it wasn't quite a design build. Same as what I'm talking about now, it's not apples to apples. We have tried to use it for water treatment plant um, expansions in the past and been successful in that. Uh, one of our retired engineers, Larry Wayno, was, was a bit of a, a um, design build, I won't call him guru, but he was, he was well informed on that and traveled a lot around the design build world. Um, so I went to a conference a couple weeks ago with the Design Build Institute of America and met a lot of industry folks. Now a lot of design build work coming in 2023, by 2023, 47% of government projects nationally will be done on a design build basis. We're talking, I, I was in a talk with the man and the woman who run New York's billion dollar annual budget to rebuild all their facilities. They're re rebuilding all their jails to replace Rikers Island right now under design build. Um, a woman who's running the um, Puget Sound Metro upgrade, system upgrade is doing it under design build. You know, there's a big, big things. I was the only landscape architect in a bunch of engineer, a whole room of engineers and, and building contractors and things like that. So when I tried to dial it into a park, I got a lot of blank stares, but I had a lot of good side conversations with people. And I really think that this is an exciting way to go that will not only lead to a good project, it will be less, less city resource intensive. 
it puts a lot of the risk back on the design build team, not on the city. And it's a way that we can get projects done. That five month period that I mentioned, sort of in the middle of the process, essentially disintegrates. It's a little bit heavier up front, and I'll explain why in a second. But once you get the team going, I'm thinking that we can take that 15 to 25 month um, window and shave that down to 10 to 15 months. You know, that's a significant reduction in the length of time that will take to get a finished product to the public, which is really our goal, is to get it out there built. Um, so, Steve, can I just sure. inject one more Please. piece here? Um, the other piece, I think having these smaller conversations with Harold and Jody in the room, I think there was a higher level knowledge of what else that staff, Steve's and Kathy's and Danielle's were, were working on. Stuff is not on there. RSVP is not on there. The CIP project, we already need the land. We don't have a citywide landscape division. And to meet those needs, they were being pulled in. So there's a lot of, well, why spend so much time on these other projects? We didn't have anyone, and as an organization, I think this group also recognized how important it is when you do a project that you have trees tied into that product, into that concrete design of the street. So um, the value they added was significant. Harold is also now saying, well, those other groups need to bring that in. You can be a contractor, then it has a landscape architect. You need to look at potentially hiring a landscape architect that's more of a city-wide. So Harold is looking at this, I think, at a little bit different level, too, on some of those gaps that when we just say we're you know, doing other stuff, those other stuff are, I think, things that are really valuable to community. I think Harold really kind of recognized that and is looking to fill some of those gaps as well. So that time that Frank Steve gave is the perfect timeline without Steve being pulled in multiple right. directions. Right, yes. The, the, the projects that other departments are running take away a lot of our time that we can't then put toward our projects. Um, so what we did is we tried to identify eight projects. We also wanted to make sure that we identified projects that were are already underway, that we don't want to slow down by this new thing. This new thing is going to take a little time to get off the ground. So we identified the purple box to the left. You can see projects that we're continuing to do. You know, the Button Rock Master Plan. Danielle can probably give you an update on that here. You know Gala. We're, I'm, I'm getting design, 100% design drawings are coming the Monday after Thanksgiving. And he's adding two more quick for us today. I, I did. I, it's, the, it's the easiest design change is structure more rectangles over here. There we go. I need more money from you in order to pay for it, but uh, that's, that's a later conversation. Same frame, phase 13. The Lou Miller Park rest, uh, renovations that Kathy had started that I've taken on, and then the Kensington Park restroom are um, is another project that is slowly ongoing, but is outside of this whole design built umbrella. These future projects are other projects we've identified in the near future that need to happen. A lot of them are um, park renewal projects. We want to make sure, and I've stressed this to David, that in talking with Timber, we feel as though over the past three, four years, we've done a lot of park renewal work. We had a big climb ahead of us that we've gotten over that hump. We want to make sure we don't just create another huge hump by ignoring park renewal for four or five years, why the pretty sparkly design build projects are all on our forefront. We're working on that. And five years down the road, we've got a huge list of park renewal projects we have to do without the funds, resources, time to do it. So we're cognizant of that. And so that's going to be existing as of right now outside of design build. Those type of projects don't necessarily lend themselves to design build because there's a lot more doing little things here, little things there, rather than major construction, which is what design build lends itself to. So that's the future projects, like that's in the purple box? Yes. Project. Yep. And those are the ones as Lou Miller drops off Steve's plate, then you, you pick something else up. We're going to just go to this whole design build and just not do anything else. Yes. There, we think that there, there's capacity getting for them to do these renewals and these, these projects they're working on. As we get the design build going, they'll still have that capacity. We'd like to see how we can kind of continue to work those into it. And then, so what we did was we took the eight projects and sort of grouped them into groups of two for similar design teams and construction teams, you know, like work. Uh, that was at the recommendation of our purchasing manager, uh, Ballard Scott, who was nervous about jumping into one contract with eight projects in five years about something we've never done before, right? wholeheartedly agree and this is we're going to be using a design or um, best value approach as far as the procurement policy process which is also going to make things a little bit more quick but that's a process that you can use for design build where basically they have to come to you and 
you can advertise. You're, you're not advertising, you're asking for this project, you're asking them for the design build skills. They come to you with a six page um, proposal, half hour interview, you pick three. And those are the three that you're dealing with then to negotiate for the first blue box up here. Um, at the time of negotiating the first blue block, blue box, which is neighborhood parts, that's one we sort of chosen uh, to move forward with. The uh, South Clover Meadows Park, that design was not, was not far enough along where we felt we couldn't include in this process. So I'm taking my early design and I'll give that to the design team that, you know, based on the master plan that was already done. And then Fox Meadows Neighborhood Park, uh, I presented to the HOA last week and told them that their project was going to be one of the first that we do too. So we're going to hit those first two neighborhood parks hard to try to get those moving. That will be the first design build contract that we enter into in 2023. So like I said, with the three firms that we finalize, three teams, I should say, because it's usually it's a contractor and a design team that build up, team up together to create an LLC or whatever it is to, to create the firm that you hire. We would, of those three, we would say, okay, here's the here's how I describe the park. I'll write this long narrative about what these parks should include, what they may include. We have to go through a public process still for Fox Meadows to see what the neighbor, neighborhoods want, the residents want, and then they give us a price. And then they work with us. The price includes design, construction, everything at the very beginning. And then they tell us, and then with the best value approach that we'll be using, we don't have to take the low price, we can take the one with the best value for the city. And so that a lot gives us the flexibility, whereas in design bid build, we're often tied into that. We have to have a reason why we wouldn't pick a low bid. And a reason that you don't like their subcontractor is not a good enough reason that I've found, although <laughs> it would have helped me in the past, but that is a that is a reason that's about viable in this design build process. So there's a lot more negotiation going on. It does take several months to get through this process, if you can imagine, but Valerie has assured us that she is going to put the resources aside to help us through this because she's excited to get this process. She and Harold, with Harold's direction, is really excited to get this process within the city's uh, wheelhouse for pure procurement, and Harold thinks that this could be process we use for road rehab and you know sewer line maintenance and things like that I don't care that's that's somebody else's deal I don't worry about that um, so anyway that's the first group the other three group that we groups that we identified were um, trail projects Union Reservoir Loop Trail and St. Green Greenway Phase 12 those are both projects that are either funded or show funding in the next five year CIP We've got large complex projects, which is the Quail Campus build out and Dry Creek Phase 2. Um, there's some thoughts about the Quail Campus build out. If you remember the existing master plan, the current master plan that was adopted by council back in the early 2000s, um, shows an ice facility on there. There is talk that we may re engage the public and go back to the public and see if that ice facility actually might not be the best use of that space, and there might be some other activities. <laughs> that might use that space much more effectively and quickly. And so that's a conversation we'll be having with the community as we move forward. Um, and the board, obviously, will be part of that discussion. And then Dry Creek Phase 2 is the build-out of everything in Dry Creek Park, except for the rec center and outdoor pool that are shown, you know, at sort of the southeast corner. And then the fourth category is existing park additions. That's changing the existing Dry Creek Park fields to synthetic turf and um, the Sandstone Ranch Phase 4 project, which is shown as funded, the construction funding for next year. And that's the, the last bit of ball fields at the southwest corner of that park. Steve, I was looking through my emails. How many parks did Valerie say that the Arizona? They did 55 projects, but it was only $18 million. And they had some park renovations. Now, Harold wondered if we should go to Roseville, which is a suburb of Minneapolis. Um, we haven't gotten there yet. Uh, so we'll see if we, we want to go out there. And that's part of that, David, is that's, they, that wasn't necessarily a design bill. That was BDA. Okay. So we're doing two new processes here. Exactly. Uh, best value approach is a procurement method. Design build is a design construction method. So we're using DBA to pick a DB firm. So the DBA, I'm less, well, I'm actually extremely nervous about it because 
I never, I always get these 30 paper proposals and they do these long interviews with all these different folks. It's one person that come in, they talk to you for a half hour, six pages, you have to choose. And that's, that makes me uncomfortable, but we'll see. A lot of this is outside my comfort zone based on what I've, how I've done it previously. But the goal is, based on Harold, he doesn't care if we fail, he wants us to try something new to get things going because we're not getting the additional staff that we need and so we need to come up with a different way to do it with the staff we have. So this is the approach we've come up with. And, and the, this best value piece, really, we, we got to talk to the founder's, the founders oh, yeah. sons. Yeah. It sounds like a family that has kind of worked on this as being used widely in Europe and in large parts of the U.S. too to do procurement. And really what they're saying is when you do this sort of process and you're asking people to come in and take the time to put in front of you their package, you're getting their top performers. Um, and they have a economic incentive to get this thing done as fast as possible because you get your price up front. So Right, so say they say Clover Meadows Park's gonna take $1.7 million. It's to their interest to design the park to the specifications that we write at the beginning that meets the community needs. Now, in their proposal to make them more attractive is where they start saying, well, we can do this, this, and this, things that might be above and beyond what's in the scope that would be attractive to the community that um, would allow us to choose maybe the 1.8 million rather than the 1.7 million you know, vendor, you know, the, the three teams that we, we go to. That's where I'm still learning again, so if this is confusing, I apologize, but it's really a, a way that the vendor can show off how good they are vendor being the, the design build team and the city having the option to choose the best best value for the city even if it's a little bit more money there might be more value to it in the long run so currently so i'm not super versed in this so currently what has to happen is let's say bob's parks says we can do it for 200 dollars, and ralph's parks etc says oh we're going to do one for 195 we have to take the 195. We, we, we have to justify why we don't take the 195. Oh. And Joe, Joe's Parks, if they don't like the justification, they can come back at us. Now, it has, it, there, have, there have been reasons why we don't choose the lowest bid, but okay. it's not as easy as just saying no. It's the obvious but low bid is what we now, know. Now, now if, um, if, you know, Bill's Park says, well, ours is going to be 250, but we're going to put a roller coaster in, and, you know, Bill's, says like, well, ours is still 185, but we got a skating rink for you, then we can choose whichever one we want and we don't have to justify it anymore. Is that, is, if I'm just yes. trying yeah. to yes. 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 Story justification process. The scoring process is the yes. justification. It's like, this is the best value for the city. Okay. Even though it's a higher price, the value we think we're getting. Tell, tell me, because this is right up your alley. Tell me if you know about this stuff, because it's all about the metrics, which is right in your thing. I don't know how to put metrics on creativity. I don't believe in that. They say they can do it. But I'm still worried about losing the creativity in these parts. Oh, I'm, I'm familiar with design build, but not to not, not, not the best value. Or, okay. Yeah, the, the best value pieces are there confusing. city ordinances, laws that we have to change in order to do this? Is that written in already that we take the low bid? The yes. city, yes. <laughs> the, city, the procurement guide, the procurement requirements are already vetted by council by the city attorney's office. The city attorney's office has already vetted a design build contract previously that has been used by the city. Uh, so we've already vetted that. So that bridge has been crossed. Do, and, okay. to, to do a different methodology, which has also been suggested by Harold, makes purchasing in the city attorney's office a little hesitant because it takes a long time to push that contract through their review. You know, months and months. Uh, and so we're trying to use something that's already existing within our purchasing code. This is really exciting. And I'll, I'll just say, I think Steve has actually been. Yeah, we're pretty jazzed. I'm still nervous as hell. But yeah, I, thought, I mean, I would be too. I would be too. You're like, oh. It's very it's different. Like there's a, there's a little bit more hands off, this? hands off piece because one of the pieces that when they see these things fail, it's really where the, um, the, the group procuring this, this service gets in the way of the process. And that's what we've kind of heard that it really is if you're being the best people and you're probably having to spend less time out there and the more time you're spending with us, keeping them from doing their projects. So um, it, it, it is a piece I think all of us sitting here kind of wonder how you just turn over a city project that, you know, Steve's and Kathy's and Paul's and yours have said such a great job working with the community and we bring an outside person in to fill that role. But again, the assurance is that you're picking the best people with the best skills or bringing their best people who have 
done this kind of work. So are there going to be, I mean, I'm guessing even when you hire a contractor, you need somebody to manage and oversee the contractor. Yeah. So are there, I'm guessing that you still don't have enough capacity, even with this new approach. So, so is that being recognized and yes, considered? Yes, yes. Two things. One is right now on a project, if a contractor builds something and the contractor says, well, this is per plan, I can't do anything about it unless I pay them to change it. If the contractor and the design build team are working on something and I say that this has to be a age six to eight playground and they specify the wrong play equipment, that's between them. Rip it out and do it over. I don't care. It's not, city's just, nope, not for us. Takes the risk away from the city, puts it on the design build team to design and build what the city want within our budget. And that's one of the benefits that I'm seeing from this is that you have a lot more control, even though I don't have to be on site holding the contractor's hand every day. If I come out and say we want an irrigation system and I found out that the irrigation system was only 12 inches deep, dig the whole thing up, do it again. Not my so you problem. still have to inspect to your point. You still still somebody's still capacity. watching, but, but it's maybe not, not as carefully. It's Yes, it's not as close. Okay. You have a lot more latitude and which stretches my time over a greater period of space of projects. Uh, that being said, you'll notice on here that we have a couple term positions shown on here. We, we, I think that we have, assuming there's the next Kathy, I think between Kathy, Danielle, and I, we have the capacity to, to bite off the first design build contract. I'm hoping that David will approve an owner's rep for me that would help us through that process as someone that's more educated in design build that for several thousand dollars we can hire to advise us, which I think would be a good idea in the beginning. But after that, we need people to be coming in and doing things so we can still be doing the things in the purple and all the other I things that we do. I was wondering about all right. the other things that are right. not the design code. So too. Jody has been very clear to Harold that we need more staff to accomplish this. He has said that his experience is that when we hire term staff, they often become permanent staff. But he's open to talking about term staff right now. Um, we also got to figure out who's going to manage the overall design build contract. And you'll notice the little orange box in the upper right, there's two ways of doing that that we've come up with. One is to struggle by with between David and me, integrated services, which is our uh, budget folks and purchasing, or to hire someone that we've been trying to hire, which got did not get approved in the budget or did not get put into the budget last year, which was a manager for park and trail design or planning and development. So maybe we can hire that person. It's, I presented that to, to Harold and Joni several times. They seem amenable to it, but I don't know where that's gonna go. That's really outside of, that's between David and Joni and Harold. But, they, but they've, they've heard the message that we need people. We can't do this by ourselves. And I think as you see, as we kind of, last time we put up, we put it up as kind of things we kind of did a little reveal with kind of sticky boards up there. And by the time we got to the last piece, which is kind of closed behind those doors, Joni's like, well, you need more people to do this. And yeah. da -da, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the same thing. Well, so I kind of lead, it leads a conversation to, I think, a, a conclusion, which is kind of what's been nice about this process, kind of walking through and seeing what we want to get done, what we have using metric-based approaches that I, I think as people look at it, we definitely need some additional capacity. And I hope that, yeah. No, I'm glad to, I'm really glad to hear that, and I hope that that continues, that the folks you all are working with continue to hear that Crab is particularly interested in that. And I think it's great. I mean, this is an exciting new approach. I think it's, you're approaching it with a really positive, energetic mm -hmm. attitude, which right. is great. And But I think it's, it's not going to succeed if you don't still recognize that there is some additional oh, capacity well, well, needed. You can't just, like, it's not magic. Move all the pieces <laughs> around it. Right. And I, I've been open with this group on, that's why we're here, that, yeah, that this is important to me and I'll continue to ask. I think Joni's been a great champion in this. Mm -hmm. Another piece that I think that, you know, um, some things, things start and then other things get distracted. If we don't continue to focus and move down this path, it just puts us further behind. You know, Steve has invested a lot of time in this, Valerie has, and if, if we end up going back the way things were, I think we, I, I feel like we really need to move this direction, at least and see how that first box goes. Our previous work plan was for Fox Meadows to start the design fourth quarter of 2022. So I had to go tell the HOA that, yeah, we're not gonna do that. We've been telling them that for seven, eight years now. And they were not thrilled, but when I explained this and I said, 
I can tell you that with this process, even though it's going to take longer up front, you know, expect the, the design engagement with the public to be happening uh, May, June, July of next, of next year. So it's going to take us that long to get a design build team on board. They'll hit the ground running and they can get the grading plan done. The contract can start grading before the plans are even done. Like once you get your grading set, the contract can go out there and start doing it. So I told them, we'll be moving dirt by the end of next year. We're not going to have the final design done by the end of next year, likely, but we'll be far enough along where we can be doing some of the civil construction. That's the start of every project that we can show that we're, we're, we're working toward getting them apart, and then they'd have a park in 2024. So is nice. this the future park? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Because it's been more than seven or eight years. Well, <laughs> in the future. Yeah. It's, it was 2003 when that land was dedicated to the city. Right. We didn't promise it to them really in an in a expedient format until the master plan was adopted by council in 2014. Okay. And when the 14, that was one of the, the top priority projects. And then we. we I've had several of those neighbors say, yeah, and we want the name to be Future, future Park. Park. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, they want to rock it. Whatever. We want Future Park. I said that to the HOA that that does not meet the naming criteria that's the council unless they choose that, but uh, we'll see. Um, yeah, I was thinking that I personally would like, and maybe I'll just start bringing it, I would like a map for our names. There's so many things that I know I know these things, but I'd like just to like we'll see, yeah. we, whenever we're talking about stuff, I I want to see where it is because I I know I know some of the names. I've been to every single park that we have, in so Steve that, so. but it's so hard for me to remember the names. I have eight thousand kids to remember their names. Sure, I get it. So here's the rec center. Yeah. Here's the Indian Gallup Park. Yeah. You know that, one, that right? one. Okay. Yeah. So that one's the one that's. We're go going forward with, you know where Lou Miller is, right? Right by Longmont High School? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Lou Miller is right here with the big pond. Between the hospital and okay. the hospital. Okay. That, that's ongoing. That's ongoing. Oh, Lou Miller. Okay, Lou Miller. That's where the disc golf is. Uh, okay, yeah. yeah. That, okay, I know. That's, that's under construction. Yeah, it's, that's that, it's like That's the one my church right. um, sponsored for a lot of years. Okay. okay. And then St. Frank Base 13 is Danielle's project. Sorry, which is really connecting Sandstone Ranch to St. Brain State Park. Oh. So this is 12 that's or 13, one, phase 13. This is the one that Danielle's already oh, talking gotcha, gotcha. that's, that's the one, that's that the one with fantastic. the storage unit in the yes, yes. arcade thing yep, yep, that we're yes. really excited about. Yes. Okay. Can we just stop that storage unit? Thanks. We didn't, no. <laughs> we didn't <laughs> want to. It's in Well County. Actually, they're working very well with it. Are they good? Yeah, because I saw the story construction. Oh, yeah, they're, yeah. we're going to need the storage unit. Um, Everybody's going to buy all their crap from Costco and have to have some place to store it. <laughs> right. Um, that was a project that we decided we were too far along with design. There were some funding challenges. We can't do design with CDOT. CDOT, CDOT, CDOT doesn't, even though federal funds are allowed for design build, the CDOT doesn't allow that in the current okay. guidelines, so we couldn't do that. Okay. that. But anyway, the new park projects are Clover Meadows, which is way down in southwest Lamont. If you remember the, the um, right here. Uh, Wait, where am I? Portico and, and over here. Yeah. And what's going on with that park? I can't remember. That is that going to be the dog park? Nope. No. This, this one, the master plan showed a uh, playground, an open turf area, um, exercise stations, a bike skills area. Um, it's only a 6.8 6 acre park. I, I seem to think that's the one that I've had community members approach me and say that they really want it to be a natural area and not turf. No, I think that's the one. I think that's the one up here. Yeah, that's a. Uh, it, it may be it's this one right here. Right it could be, but right now, city council has already adopted, approved the master plan, and we're moving forward with the design as is. The conversation isn't open any longer on that unless city council can so. Okay. Um, Fox Meadows. Is the other part that does not have an approved master plan. We've done no preliminary design on it. So that's, that's a future part. That's, that's, yes. that's a future part that's over here on 9th and County Line Road. Yeah. And that's right here. This one's interesting because this is the park site. This is the future school site. There have been rumblings that the district might not want this land. Do we make this a 20-acre park? Is that appropriate inside a neighborhood, a huge 20-acre park? I don't tend to think so. But maybe there's something. We'll have to have conversations with the district about that. We also paid for a pump station in the golf course right here back in 2007 or 8. And so we need to get an easement from the HOA for this property to get the pipe between here to here to the park. 
So that's something I brought up at the HOA meeting and I'll have to negotiate an easement from them. I think one thing Steve, that this process is going to do is going to have to make, help us make some decisions because every one of these park projects, it turns into salon conversations about is the school district going to build a school there? Is it going to be a bigger park? Are they going to build housing there? What kind of park did you need next time? I think there's a big point where we just have to make a decision. If it's, it's the right. rise of Union Reservoir that you continue to have these ongoing conversations because there's really no hard deadlines. We're going to make a decision, almost like the pickleball courts at Quail Campus. Is it going to be cool? Is it going to be ice? Well, you know, that's a 20-year conversation. The life cycle of pickleball courts is 20 years, and we can decide that in 20 years then. So, right. And, you know, it's really calling Scott Tilly over the district and say, hey, you still want to? If he says yes, they're still going to build something here, the conversation is over, right. as far as I'm concerned. If they say no, then we need to talk to leadership and, you know, what do we want to put there? Is that the best use? Is more park? Is it open space? Is it affordable housing? Is it sell it off to a private? Sector to develop, I don't know. I don't, that's not my right deal. I just know about this land here. Exactly. Okay, so that's Fox Meadows. So those are the two neighborhood parks that we're going to be starting on. Okay. Um, Union Loop Trail, believe it or not, is a trail around Union Reservoir. Oh, that one, that one was easy. <laughs> yeah, <it's not> as, <laughs> yeah, you had that the one. handouts yeah. when we were on the trip yeah, and all that. Yeah, right, right. that helps. I just like, right. to, I like the, Does the this trailer. Help? Yeah, it just helps, and I think I really am just going to bring the bike map and just have it, like, you know what I mean? Because the bike map is, is it's so good. It's, like, my favorite map. But, yeah. The And so that's one that's already been approved by council. The money is already funded for that, if I remember right. So that's just design and build. There's, not, there's no more public process. There's no land easements we need up in here. It's going to be tight up in here, but we'll be working with the reservoir company, of which we're the majority shareholder. So that's the that's the loop trail, and then the other one is Golden Ponds to well, not the Pella, but Golden Ponds is right here. Mm -hmm. Trail on the north side of the river, underneath the airport road, and then connecting up to Westview Middle School on the west side of Airport Road. Well, the county is looking to make their trail system come across and connect into our trail system somewhere around the railroad track crossing. And so um, they've been pushing off, they've had some problems with property owners up in this area. This landowner wouldn't give them the route they wanted. They were they're under contract to buy this land and or acquire this land, I should say, in 2024. Isn't that swag right yes. there? Yes. Deal? Yes. So so 2024 or 25, the county will own that land and they don't have to ask for permission to put the trail where they want it, they just do it. Mm -hmm. So that's they're playing the waiting game there. They that that contract was signed in before 2010, by 2000. Yeah, yeah. I think almost 90 now. Yeah, we, I know her from way yeah, her, decades. Her kids are. Her kids. Her kids. <laughs> <laughs> and they are great stewards of land, and that's a centennial farm. Yeah. And there is value in keeping the centennial farm. So sure. it has and to be done super respectfully. Right. That's the county's decision, not mine. Right. Which, okay. is, which is great. Um, so those are the two trail projects. Quail Campus build out. We talked about that. That's the land right over here. Uh, country club, sorry, my landmarks. Uh, there's all this land up in here. Uh, the museum is currently working on some conversations with some donations that they've had to expand the museum facility in this general area. We need to figure out how that may impact the, act, the master plan. This development is coming through for approval right now with... Uh, it was already the, approved. It's not approved yet. I'm still at plan three view. Oh, really? Because yeah. I went to the commission thing. And right, yeah. the, the plans have been approved. Oh. The, I'm sorry, the, the concept of the, the project has been approved, the plans and the public improvement agreement have, have been approved. That's not a public thing, it's an internal thing. But um, they're showing, so we plan to put some parking here. Museum might eat into that parking a little bit with their expansion. All that's been approved right now is the commercial site right here that fronts onto Main Street. Um, the hotel site has not been approved at this point in time. It's preliminary, at a preliminary, preliminary level. But they will be building a road in with this project from this point right here, straight across connecting into the parking lot over here, at which point we need to be building our road around like this and connecting in. That's the master plan that's shown, and that's what they're responding to. So we'll have to plan to build this road at some point in the future, and this is where the ICE facility is currently shown in the master plan. And that may be needed for some other use. Um, just need to know there was an ice facility shown there in the master plan. So it's 
So I've checked out the master plan and that kind of stuff. I, I just, that, that area, and I know you're not really inviting me to talk about this, but that area Sorry. isn't, there's a lot of ecology in that area that's just not, I, that I brought up. Like there's a, there's a vernal pond that you can see from this picture um, and you usually can't see it. There's a vernal pond with, so you can see that dark spot. Yeah. Nope, nope, not that dark spot. Go down to your, down to the left. Down, 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 down. Right, right there. Oh, that? Yeah, so that has some crazy awesome amphibians in there. I found salamanders in that area. Uh, there's endangered species in that area. It's... All I can say is it's private property. So it's outside of, the, of what I can control. But they would be held to through our safe process. To make sure that there's ET species at all there. That yeah, there city council has told me when I brought it up to uh, to Marcia, she's like, "Well, the wildlife people didn't find it." I'm like, "Well, I'm on it all the time. I'm a wildlife person." But yeah, we don't we don't yeah. go out on a private property, right? We have them hire, they hire they consultants. Hire yeah, and what yeah. surprised that their consultants that they paid didn't find the species in 30 seconds that the people in the area found. It's a yeah, there's stuff there, and there's an easement for a river easement for a reason. Or, well, that's, no, that, that, that's up here. Yeah, the, the I mean, it's all. This, unfortunately, to tell you, this, <laughs> I'm responsible for all this dirt right here because uh -huh. this all came out of the Left Hand Creek Flood Control Project. Mm -hmm. We hauled over here, and then post flood, I hauled in more over here. Mm -hmm. This is just a result of bad grading. It's just a depression in the land. It's nothing. It may have turned into something that wildlife has moved into, but they just didn't have enough dirt, and so they left a low spot there. That's all, that's mm -hmm. the only reason that's there. So, just a little history on it. Quill Campus, and then we talked about Sandstone Ranch, built out of Phase 4 Sandstone, Walmart, here we go. That's down in here, there's more parking down in here, and then another two, three, or four plex could turn into something else. We'll have to rethink about that, you know, at least two, you know, just asking recreation. What do you need more, baseball, football, pickleball, like what, what do you need? You need it all, and oh, so that's. Sandstone. I I just feel like pickleball is is a flash in the pan, and we're just building more stuff. It's, it's. We hear a lot of the otherwise there from a great percentage of the public, and so we're trying to address think, those needs as much as we possibly can. I don't think it's can. a great percentage of the public. I think it's some laughs. A vocally great percentage of the public. Yeah, a vocal. Percentage. We're not hearing anyone else saying anything else, so that's the yeah. great percentage of the public that we're hearing right now. Yeah. So it's, a, it's a challenge. So, yeah, I, I just as because I think we all, I mean, we hear this stuff all the time for all kinds of things that, but I, I think in the national level, even we're seeing this, this is probably more than a quick flash in pan, at least. I, I do think there's a demographic shift in what people are. Stephen Colbert is having a pickleball pickle pickle thing. I saw during the football game. <laughs> um, and then the last project is Dry Creek, again, back down in Southwest Longmont. Here, the two projects are, you know, these, these fields are the fields that aren't used right now. We're going to turn these into synthetic. This is the future, a future rec center location. This is a, the future outdoor pool location. But the, the balance of this park here is what we would be building with phase two in the third box, the, uh, the complex projects. That when I do get calls from the public. That has a lot of trade-offs. And there's an existing 18-hole golf course out there that is not well used. Not well maintained. This golf course. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. Yes. Barely. Well, you said eighteen holes golf. Yeah. Well, I thought it was a disc golf. It's really rough. It's really rough. Yeah. Like what? I mean, it's a rough disc golf course. I see a lot of it, and I hear you saying, you know, like, and we're going to grade it. We're going to build a park. What about just having a park? Because. So there's I just so much value. In, and there's so much potential, play potential, and recreation potential. That's what all those kids are saying, is like, do less. Like, why, why are we, why do we tear all the nature out of the Dickens area and then put a couple dead logs, leave a couple dead logs and have it be the nature area? We, we tore all the nature out. Like, why can't we just leave some of this stuff and then let people be on it? And, and like right across, the kids were listing the rules that they thought were stupid. And one of them was like, you got to stay on the trail. Why not you have to stay on the trail, right? Like, you know, like this is like, 
Like, why can't we just leave that how it is and have people enjoy it how it is? Like, what's wrong with that? So you have to remember that in civic infrastructure, you might things might look like a park, but there are a lot of other things besides a park. The reason why Dickens the way it is is because it's a flood control project on open space within a nature area. So you have all of those different levels of things. We had to remove everything because we needed the flood capacity okay. in that area. So flood, you can't leave nature and have flood capacity. They're, they're contrary to one another. So we had to remove the nature and then re- yeah. with that, that's in, an in an urban, yes, thank you, thank you. Yes, in, in, this, in an area where we have already developed properties on, on both sides of it. So that's the reason why Dickens is where, is where it is. We consciously have in our park system Neighborhood parks, which are meant for local active play, community parks, which are meant for regional intensive active play, and nature areas, which are for passive recreation. We have nature areas throughout the city, including our Greenway Trails, which are areas for people to go and interact with nature. This and I think so you can go down that path. That's right. The piece of the diagonal I'll talk about next. I think is the open space too. So I think we go from intensive community-driven parks to kind of less intensive all the way up to open space where the human-centric piece becomes you know, tertiary to everything right. else. So, so this, this community park here is yeah. one of several within the city. We have Garden Acres, which is here. We have Clark Centennial, which that's getting a little hard in my eyes. I think it's somewhere in here, if I'm not mistaken. We have Sandstone Ranch, which is out here. And then Montgomery Farm, which is a, is a future one. So for 100,000 residents plus how much money do you make on baseball and softball tournaments and soccer tournaments every year? Your recreation budget relies on bringing teams in from around the country. Half a million dollars. Or, well, that's about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars just in rental fees. Plus, the, the impact is significant. Yeah. Okay, so those are people from outside the community. If our community is saying that our community park, we want a nature area oh. as our community park. Why can't we listen to them? It's cheaper. Uh, that's also hundreds of baseball families within our community, too. So, yeah. And I, I do I think the that. piece of Long Mind is really good at is listening. And again, that's what's great about this group that sits here, is they bring those different perspectives. And I think Long Mind is one of the things that I always say our landscape architects and, and planners have done a great job of reaching out to the community saying, what do you want? I would say there's not a, a park out there that has it, that Steve hasn't talked to those neighbors and said, what are we really looking for and, and trying to... Uh, address those needs. And I think the bigger picture, like Steve said, how we balance that across our community with our more natural areas and our community parks. But I, we, we are trying to strike a balance. If you think about the master plans for Gallo and for South Clover Meadows, they are more than 50% native grasses, native areas. That, which is good, because I mean, I'll tell you, nobody in that neighborhood plays pickleball. That Jackie did the talk. That's Jackie's area. Okay. Our, our lawn monsters didn't talk tonight, and some of them couldn't come. They don't play pickleball, right? That area is a Latino area, right? That's the Latino community park. They play groundies, because I play with them. They play groundies. They, they want groundies. They want a good groundies area, and they want a great place for grandma to sit while they have a picnic. And I think they'll be able to provide that once the park is done, all of those yeah. things. Yeah. But that's the kind of thing is that I, you know, I. And the other, just the other thing is with, with those native areas, there will be signs to stay on the trail because unfortunately we can take one person walking off the trail. We can't take all the people walking off the trail or else the grasses doesn't grow. Then we have pollution. We have erosion. We have irrigation challenges. We have, it, it, it snowballs as far as the operational side. So we do intend to keep people on the trails. The same frame green was intentionally built with all those railings to have identified locations where people come down and interact with the river, but not free, free fall. Yeah, and so then they can't interact with nature. And so we're taking more nature areas away. I don't know. So we could go a long time. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Just in the interest of time, I think we yeah. should probably wrap okay. this. Could you just, um, there was a community park uh, next to Gall- the Gallup Park. Yes, sisters. sisters. I forgot about that one. Thank you, sisters. So it, where does that fall here, and where does Montgomery Farms fall in, in any of this? Good, good, good yeah. question. Um, There's interplay, though, with this and probably yeah. the, the tax as well. Yeah, so sisters, I forgot. I'm sorry to mention that there's a 70-acre park right here, a future community park. That is not at all 
in anything we're talking about. Mm -hmm. There isn't any um, momentum behind that part developing right now. Could happen, you know, don't know. One of the locations for the, um, that could put a, put a uh, wrinkle in this is if Montgomery Farms is chosen as one of these, then we're gonna need to master plan Montgomery Farms. You can't just put a building here and expect the people to react around it. You have to get all the utilities up there, making sure they're not bisecting fields and things like that. So we would, we would need to master plan this park site. That would probably kick out quail or kick out something else. Or we handle that outside of the design build world. That's very possible too. We just hire a consultant as part of the rec center the, the architect that had to do the rec center to do the master plan for the entire site, we can handle that. This is if the rec right. center any year passes and that site is chosen. Yes. yes. Okay, got it. Correct. Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of interplay between all these pieces. That's where recreation and, and parks development work together on those types of, uh, of siting and facilities. So, really, that's in a nutshell. We still need more staff. We're trying to do eight projects in five years. It's nervous, makes me nervous. But we'll get there We're using some new processes that we've heard from council and from the public that we need to get going. So I think Harold's guiding us towards something that's a little bit more, a um, little less control. I'll, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest, I still have problems with having less control over all these things. I don't like that at all, but I'll learn and we'll see. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Hopefully it'll still be fun for you, too. It's a lot to bite off. It's an interesting five years ahead. Great. Well, thank you, Steve. Um, and again, thank you for kind of really your enthusiasm in this. Uh, I know it's a lot right now with everything we have going on. So I went to I Vegas. Woo! Really <laughs> <laughs> Vegas alone in the comments is not a fun time. I'll tell you. So the next piece is really, and I think, Aaron, I was going to say. Were you going to just jump to this, or were you going to, because it might oh, be sorry. a transition if you want to. That's what's this going to agenda. Let's just see. No, I guess we can we can skip. Let's just go. I was going to write you all these pages. Oh yeah, transition. Yeah, we should do the first and then. Yeah, go with this. Um, so, do you want to say anything, or you want me to just jump in first? Go ahead. Okay. Um, so the next is about. Hey, sorry, one more thing. Oh, yeah. These eight projects are not set in stone. If there are other projects that the board and you can tell me next month, because the only two that are really dialed into is Clover Meadows and, and Box Meadows, because that's where the direction we're getting. The other ones, if the board thinks that there's reason we should be looking to make, put efforts and money elsewhere rather than one of these, please let us know sooner rather than later. We're basing a program around this. If there's different feelings, share them soon, next couple of meetings. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, so the next item is just following up on the uh, board candidate interviews. So you all probably remember it, well, except those that weren't here, that uh -huh. Jeff and David uh, let us know last week that the city, or last month, that the city council is trying a new process for selecting board members or for vetting applicants for advisory boards. And this new process involves a longer interview, not just the sort of five minute, like, speed um, meeting. And it also allows current board members to be part of the process. And so Nicholas and I had the opportunity to join Jeff and David and Ben um, in a round of interviews for PRAB applicants last week. And since neither Jeff nor Manoj are opting to return. Uh, we had two seats open. And so ahead of the interviews, Jeff shared with us sort of some questions and we went back and forth and got to have some input on what questions were asked. And he also shared some priorities that had been identified in terms of someone who has interest in ice skating or ice hockey, someone who has children participating in rec programs, someone who has interest in sort of parks, open space lands, greenways, natural resources, so broadly. Um, and then we conducted the interviews and based on the conversations with the applicants, we're recommending that we move one of the candidates that we interviewed forward based on sort of good alignment, relevant professional and civic experience, sort of relationship to the priorities that were identified uh, but we're recommending on holding off filling the second seat and waiting until the June recruitment so that we can do some additional outreach. I don't know if you want to say. 
That was really well said. I'll just <laughs> 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 I I follow that. that. Act you had notes? Okay, all right. <laughs> um, what I was just saying is that the, the, the one candidate we decided to move forward, uh, I'm really excited about, about this person. Uh, I'm not sure we're saying names at this point, but um, they really, they showed a lot of investment interest and they clearly had read our meeting notes and were invested in um, what we're discussing and they were looking for a fine uh, addition to the board. So that's all I have to so it's they, my understanding and then do this new process that it goes forward to city council and not sure exactly. But do we want to do we want to yeah. pass a motion to recommend the I don't know that I'm looking. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know that process yet. Let's Yes. I, I don't we will interview um, the, the, those candidates or those applicants recommended by boards and commissions on December 10th. Okay. So those five Great. minutes speed day interviews so you still do them. You just will be based on substantial okay. interviews Great. Okay. and that's the basis for your recommendations. That's helpful. So I think it was our group's recommendation that we move one of the applicants forward and Data and Jeff have that information, and that we hold a seat open and wait until the June recruitment and do some more robust outreach. Yeah, and I think it's a great way to that hearing tonight. I think I've hearing that we're not hearing from our whole community. Mm -hmm. I think this group and staff probably needs to do a better job of reaching out to our community. And they like say we have professional staff that are on board that help us hit those target areas that we're really good at. But are there better ways to go and try to get? Um, our message out to a larger portion of our community. I think that's one of the tasks I'd like to really work with this group and with staff on how we do a better job of trying to make sure when we get to that June that we, we have done a better, more robust job of, of reaching out to our community. One thing to remember though also is that we are, we have a Parks, Recreation, and Trails Master Plan that is very clear as far as what our park and trail system will, should look like. And that was adopted by City Council and so that is really our guiding document at this point in time. So taking community parks off the board and making the nature areas would be a marked change from that document that's already been adopted that we're following. So that might be a time to have that greater conversation when that plan gets updated, hopefully in the next two or three years. I do have a question. If, and this is a new, new process, so is it okay for the board, I'm asking you, if, if the board can can recommend just one of the two sure. and it will not look at necessarily look at the other one. Well, I'll tell you, there has been, there, there's not just a one mind on this, right? There are, there, my own view is uh, we ought to work with your recommendations. There are other views that we ought to have multiple recommendations, even if you have one seat to fill, that we, if you had four good candidates, you ought to recommend against all four of them. Uh, as opposed to just one of them, if you've got four good ones. Right? Um, and then we would interview those four and make a decision. We haven't had the conversation, what if you have two open seats and you've only recommended one person by design, right, for the, for the great purpose? I think it makes a lot of sense. We haven't had that conversation. And then unless you have other people to advance at this time, you would, you would, you would advance the one nominee we would interview, and I can't imagine that we would not you know, make a point your recommendation. And you would have the discretion to appoint somebody else sure. if you wanted to fill the seat. But yep. Yeah, and I right. imagine, so for example, I know in, with Callahan board that, that I sit on that one, you have six, six candidates, which is crazy. And four That's spots, an four spots available. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll yeah. be, I imagine that will be that group recommending Four, but you'll have six put in front of you. No, so well, we would, it depends four. on what you're. We won't interview those. So we would only okay. interview the four that you recommend, unless As I'm you decided <laughs> that of, of the six you had five good candidates. Okay, so okay. that we would sure. interview five and select four of the five. Right. Okay. If you didn't have, if you had six applicants and only three good candidates, you would only right. recommend three. I mean, okay. Yeah. So is this a problem with sure. calendar years? Is it set up? You, get, you can do whatever you guys like, or is there, you no, know, this is for calendar year 2023 and 20, you know, is this a two and a half year term now? Whoever takes over, and if, if we 
crew with somebody in June. I think the I think the intent is to try to get these all on the same term. Okay. So we're not doing it twice a year because it. I have to tell you, the clerk's office gets real confused. <laughs> right. <laughs> real where people are with their terms. Yeah. So. So, in other words, our job is to do some outreach and see. For the next one. For the next one. Yeah. And are there any parameters that they have to go by? You know, do, do people have to have a college degree? Do they speak English? Do they be residents of Longwood for one year? Well, I think what we were looking, you know, what we're looking for is do they, so we have these sort of three areas of interest, you know, and then I think, you know, what are the perspectives that we feel like would strengthen the board and make sure that we have sort of broadly reflective of the community? I think we really want someone who wants to be on the Parks and Recreation Board and really, you know, cares about this, whatever their views about that are. Mm -hmm. But, I mean... Generally, this board and planning and zoning are the are the two boards. Yeah, historic Preservation, Parks and Public Places, they kind of lives at the top four, but this and PNZ are the... Are typically, we have the most applicants. People want to serve on this board. Yeah, Jeff was very surprised. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, I have this job. It's Gary Moore. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, you know, these board seats don't come up that often, and I really appreciate that opportunity for us to, you know, inform how the board moves forward and, the, you know, the direction, the shape of the board, and so I think it's, it's a great opportunity. So I think we need a, a motion, if anyone wants to make one, to, you know, move forward the, the candidate that we're recommending as a result of the values. I, can I make the motion? I don't know if we can do <laughs> I it. Don't know. I feel like it has to be you. Yeah, right. One of you have to make the motion. Right. <laughs> so, I don't know what the motion is. I motion to recommend Sam Libby, and the name's out there, uh, as the candidate we would like City Council, we'd like to recommend the City Council to be appointed to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board starting in 2023. Do you have a second? Oh, sure. This is really weird. It, it just is. feels really odd. The whole, I mean, this is the first yeah. time of this process. This is what they do in Georgia. It's actually the second. <laughs> Great. Right. 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 It's the so second cycle. I vote against this. Right. <laughs> but I'll second because I trust that you two did a nice job. Oh, yeah. that's a great, yeah, that's a great one. I'm sure you just did a good job. And, and. <laughs> Three girls. They did. We support them. They did a great job. So we have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Great. Thank so you. you, I, I don't know how this gets passed on. If you take it, if you. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll give it to Jeff. We'll yeah. Okay. But I do yeah, think. I mean, on. we only had two applicants for this board, which is just like really, really unusual. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I think it does say that we need to all do some significant outreach. And you know, that should be a bigger pool and I think it, you know, hopefully it would be reflective of, of park users, yeah. parks and yeah. 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 upside down. Um, Councilor Waters, um, since you're not interviewing people until December, I mean you know, when we have one spot, instead of going another cycle without somebody, is there a process that you could we could open up and have somebody else, you know, yeah, apply or they apply directly to the council. That's my understanding. They only do it when they do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a there's a day when it starts and a day when it ends. Yeah. It's like okay. applying for a job and, you know, the period of application <laughs> closed. I don't know that that's the way it should be, but that's the way it operates right now. Okay. We should probably double the salary. I mean, twenty times the salary we get. There we go. All right, thanks everyone. And it, it was a, I mean, it was really an interesting process, even though sort of a small applicant pool. And I think it's a good idea. I mean, it does feel a little bumpy right now, but I think you know, having board members at least be able to have some opinion or say or input. However, however bumpy it feels, Paige, you should be have been part of the process that, that resulted in all of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny though, I worry that we'll become inbred, whereas yeah. the previous process was totally random. Um, <laughs> yeah, way, way more random than it should be. No, I appreciate that. I, I work 
uh, with the mayor of Lafayette, his, his classroom is right across, like, it's that close to me. And he's like, oh, no, this is it crazy. Like, it's crazy to have, like, the city, he thought the city council having to listen to all the interviews. He's like, that's crazy talk. <laughs> and, like, and then I was like, but we're moving towards this. And he's like, I think it's a good balance. No, I heard I you say you hearing. found a person with a broad, I mean, yeah, yeah. you were touching the bases for me that this is not just you're rehiring Dan or yourself or whatever. I mean, you know, that kind of, that's yeah. silly. No, you know, I mean, our intent to broad, really was to yeah. right. continue to broaden and expand the yeah. voices Great. on them. But my point is, it's just a lot of work for city council, and the city council has to want to farm this out a little bit. I mean, it's a lot of work. I think it's a good balance. I mean, I think yeah. if I had known, like, just to think about in the future, you know, if we have multiple applicants that are qualified, we could forward those. Like, say we had had right. five, and we couldn't choose. We could give you five, yeah. or we can give you one. So I mean, just knowing choose. that having that clarity right. is helpful. <laughs> so they can roll the dice. Yeah. Well, when you're sitting there on a Saturday, or generally it's on a Saturday, and the question around the council table is, <clears throat> how much do we know about what that border commission needs? And depending on how involved the liaison has been, at times there's not a lot of information from a perspective on what a border commission needs. And then the question is, who knows most? Well, it would be the staff and the members of the border commission would have much better insights than, than your council members would. And part of the reason that I think that the council's of state in the process isn't about um, <clears throat> the amount of work, it, it's, it's less, and we're not going to interview as many people. Uh, the reason it went to the council in the first place is that um, at some point in the past, there was a feeling that there was too much cronyism mm -hmm. if yeah. the interviews occur at this level. But I can tell you, there's just as I, I've sat around that table and I can tell you. There is as much cronyism around that yeah, time. Right. Like whose friends, you know. And whose yeah. term is it? And who's yeah, a wide you're never going to take that out. Yeah, but I right. think to get less of it here, it gets, it gets, it can get pretty political, right, around that table. Way less so around this table, I think. So I like, I like this adjustment that we made. So. Great. Thanks. Everybody. Thanks for your work, you yeah. Thanks. Yeah, we'll get ready. Someone else has to do it next time. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were both in on this, so uh, <laughs> like, a year from now, yeah, we'll be winding down a year from now yeah. with no prospect for further advancement. No, <laughs> no I think there's a two-term limit. I get, I, get, I get one more year on this board. That's it. Well, then you just like go for broke. That's when we tear down all the tennis. Right. <laughs> <laughs> tennis. Nobody cares on the board. And all the parks. You got to get rid of the lake. All the things I use. <laughs> good luck with that. We won't turn them down unless we strike them for pickleball. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just show up and report. Okay. Um, Boulder County Open Space and Trails Grant. Yes. Yep. So I will kick this off. I'm going to share this conversation with Danielle. This is a piece that, as the group that's been here for a while, especially Dan Wolford, you know, from his inception of the Open Space Program, has really worked very closely with Boulder County. And their ability is through their, um, their the go go dollars they get plus their their um, dollars they bring into their tax program. They reach out to the other, all the communities within Boulder County and ask, how can we partner? What do you have out there that we could really work together to to meet mutual objective goals? And Dan's not here, but you know, fortunately, I have a relationship with the county still. Danielle, she worked in the real estate division over at Boulder County for a while too. So we've kind of picked up where Dan has worked with the county and said, what are those next pieces we want to partner with the county, where we want to kind of look at those opportunities in those, those areas. And Danielle has been able to go through Dan's computer and pull up a few of those. And we can share Don't those. So we, yeah. <laughs> um, we can share those, what Dan's kind of had out there. But one of the things I wanted to do tonight, Danielle will, I, I think, talk about us a little bit too, is as you look at this and kind of look at our open space program and what we've achieved at Longmont and what we're looking to do, are the things that we as staff and we're going to bold to kind of ask for, are the things that are still aligning aligning with this group? Is it is it we really want you to look at those agricultural lands to buffer us from our eastern community? It really is. We want to partner with you on getting some more of the regional trails out there. Um, we really want you just to be ready when something is opportunity to see that family you never thought was going to settle is out there. So as any walk through that, think about it a little bit. I would, I would like to hear from this group a little bit on where you kind of think we're at with what we 
we as staff should be looking for because again, you know, these real estate transactions is willing buyer and willing seller. And sometimes those things come up and we just want to make sure we do have alignment. Yeah, so um, I guess the, the most recent um, submission that Dan put together for this city uh, were 2020 requests. Um, and the responses came back from Boulder County in 2022. So the year 2021 was skipped. Um, I don't know why, I'm not sure why, uh, but all, all the municipalities skipped 2021. So uh, we, you know, it wasn't just, it, it wasn't just us. So um, the responses to our 2020 requests, um, we had three open space requests. I'm not gonna be able to drive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and three trails requests. So, and since I don't come to this group often, I don't know how much you know about these things, um, but I can tell you this and then hopefully we can have discussion and questions. But Adam Derry, um, and then Boulder County Conservation Easement on the four private lots. Um, so this is way across, this is when we got to go to our tour. And these were, were these, these processes take a while. So this is the yeah, this is the Adam Deere yeah, right, right here. Yeah. So this is the newbie property right here that again this board was part of. These become um, open space properties here, water property here, and then you right back into the trail down here. So this is the Adam Dairy that Boulder County is partnering with us on, and we are getting close. We just put in our fourth extension on this because it really falls into Firestone's ability to work with us and the family because the family really wanted to keep four lots for the family down here. Actually, it's going to go all the way down to here. And that actually helps us because some of these areas have a lot of remediation. They're old side pits and stuff. So they're going to keep this. They will then build four lots for the family. That, that's a minor subdivision process. That process takes place in Firestone since it's um, within their, their city. So it's been annexing the Firestone. So they're, it's on their plate. Our priorities are not always their priorities, but they're working through that. And I, I, our goal is to close by the end of the year. So Longmont will be all around that little Firestone pocket. Longmont ownership. Yes. Yeah. Firestone municipality, unless we de annex. Yeah, so Firestone is here, but this is actually, a, this is, okay. we have the ability to annex this up in here at some point. Okay. So. Fire response, that's how I understand things. Fire response right there, Frederick Firestone. Yes. Frederick, Firestone. Fire response no, no, no. Uh, up above 26, yeah. City of Longmont. You know, these have rural fire districts out here, like Steve mentioned. So, um, probably Mountain the biggest, View. yeah, so Mountain View is probably the only ones out in this, this area. The biggest thing for us that we have found, we have properties within other jurisdictions the reason we'd like to annex it is really for the law enforcement and the ranger's ability to enforce our rules and regs out there. So really if, if something happens out here it would be well kind of sheriff down here would be would be the fire zone township police who would have to deal with it out there. And Lamont Fire has IGAs with hygiene, lions, not view any other ones as far as response locations and times and if we wanted to go ahead figure it out trail out here and we had to get a grading permit well right now we're going to clean up this house we have to go through well county if we did something down here we want to do a house cleanup and had asbestos in we'd have to go through firestone in their process so the more we keep it in-house and filing our process makes it cleaner but it's just working with other entities um and then and so the municipalities submit their requests and then boulder county takes them in and responds to each of them and so in this, you know, Boulder County has, is already working with us. Um, they've committed $2 million to this um, for the conservation easement um, over the agricultural parcel piece of the Adam Dairy. So they're already involved. Um, even though that, none of that is Boulder County. Yeah. No, but again, no, they take those dollars that, that they want to work with their partner communities with the long run. You know, that's a high value to us to try to make that connection up to St. Brain State Park to try to keep that loop that goes down to the sandstone ranch eventually. So it is really us working with them and saying, yeah, they, they really don't have an interest other than working with the municipal partners to try to make some of these so pieces just being together. Really nice, I guess. It's we're county residents. Yeah, we're county, it's good to say, we're, we're county residents and we're a portion of that. So. And they're looking at all the municipalities all around the county and what they're 
there's some really Lewis Bill and, Lafayette and, and, there. and you know balancing all of that. Um, and so next, it's the parcel east of Clover Basin Reservoir, which is a 14-acre parcel. So this is a piece down here. So this is one again, Boulder County Health put this one too. This is McLaughlin being heard about what Clover Basin is up here. And I'm sorry, to see if you get hit or on that point. Does everyone know where we're at up here? So this is Lockman Reservoir down here. Steve just talked about the Dry Creek or Dry Creek, yeah. Yeah, Dry Creek up in here. Um, and that's then this Nelson is Road there. Yeah, that's Nelson Road. So the plan with that is to keep that as a more natural area. It really is. Those right? are places that, that I was Again, going to try to ease in that conversation about how we try to do that balance of you know getting people into these natural areas. So here, really, let's keep it more natural. Potentially put a loop trail around this, and then maybe a bird blind or something because it really does draw a lot of migratory birds up there. Yeah. So instead of being such an intensive place for activities, no pickleball, no baseball field. Oh. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> um, but some place people could go out there and truly. Um, Maybe do some non motorized just canoeing out there, but um, really the biggest thing is preserve the wildlife and, and put some potential bird blinds and stuff at the center. People watch that. There's a piece of property down here. And I'm not sure if it's this one here or this one up here. This is the one. I think it's the southern. I see the for sale sign quite often, but it allows it to tie into it and make some connectivity kind of down to the AHI property down here. A lot for some potential parking because it really does get pretty tight because this is all areas we want to preserve down here because of these salt wetlands and the kind of grasses and stuff and wildlife down here. So if we could get something down here, potentially put some sort of trail area, get a connection coming under the road, coming this way up from the AHI property. This property here, Logman Reservoir has a trail around it, and then there's actually a Where's full, the blue sky loop, isn't it? That's right. That's, yeah, yeah, so right around the blue sky loop right here, I believe. So it's just north of Lagerman, going on up 75th, loops along yeah. the, down by these ponds, mm -hmm. and then comes back down along these private property lines there. So that's the Blue Sky Trail. And then what Steve would, and I think it's probably, I'm trying to get ahead of Danielle here, but what Steve would like to do is really they come in from this Dry Creek area. I'd like to build an underpass on 75th yeah. to connect the Dry Creek Trail that extends all the way from soon to be Sunset yeah. Street yeah. west to 75th. Yeah. Then we connect, connect to AHI and then maybe an underpass that goes up to, to, to um, Clover Basin. Clover Basin. The Nelson, maybe we can get out way without an underpass. It's just the sight lines are pretty tough and a lot of speeding, a lot of uh, biking big alleys and things out there. So, probably so Danielle, is that a, that's an approved project or it's a project that's being submitted? To yeah. The, so we submitted it to Boulder County as, you know, this is something that is. A priority for us uh, will you partner with us and their response was that um, whenever the opportunity becomes feasible and funding is available basically like when you're ready to meet with us come meet with us because we've got some things that we you know we've got some things that we need ducks need to get into a row before we can um, go to them so it's kind of it was carried forward from the previous report so I think he's keeping it on the forefront by doing it two years in a row there um, and their response in 2019 was like, well, it's not even in, it's not even in the five year, no, that's not that one. They're, they're saying yes, they're saying yes, come to us when you're ready. Hey, we're just waiting for a landowner to be willing to sell. Yeah, I think or? right now it's probably a landowner we want to sell and it, you know, we oftentimes, open space programs get accused of, you know, increasing market rates because we pay higher than the market. The piece on that is when you have these, these assemblage pieces. So it's like we say, go get a comp. As well, when you have a house with two, you know, four bedrooms, two baths, you find another, another house with four bedrooms and two baths. Can you find another piece of property that allows for parking next to a reservoir to protect the wildlife area and allow Steve to tie into it? So there really is no <coughs> comp a lot of times, those things that really become what they call an assemblage piece. To put this piece together, you need that. Oftentimes the owners know that. Um, and it, it really does inflate the cost sometimes, but we are going to be reasonable with the taxpayer dollars. So we're not going to pay something that can be brought into. This could be right there. It really could be a McMansion sitting there at some point. We probably will not be able to compete with that, but um, we, we definitely want a um, willing seller that is willing to negotiate a price that we think is fair. But we do on the other piece. Yes. Yep. Um, the third open space request 
uh, this last time was Highland Ditch Water Rights. If if Longmont successfully purchased the Olander property, which is 150 acres, the request is for Boulder County to help restore the original four shares of the Highland Ditch Water Rights to the property. Um, and Boulder County is probably willing to partner as soon as that becomes feasible. That's our response. And that's where we were out for part of our field trip, right? Mm -hmm. May. Yes, Olander is a little bit north of this. So Olander is a piece, I want to say it's right here or right here. It's got this oil and gas well around it. I so thought it was that one to, that. The, to the west. I, th I thought, but I could be wrong. This one here? Yeah. So the whole land of property is one that the city, prior to me even being here, has, has wanted to acquire again, kind of protecting this area all north, this watershed north of Union Reservoir. Um, again, in our negotiations, we were not quick enough. We had a developer come in out of, out of the area, out of, actually out of state, and put in a higher offer. They then sold the water off of it. So it's basically dry land. The development they wanted to do really has fallen apart. Um, so now they're trying to sell us that property at the price that you'd pay if it had water on it. Um, <laughs> um, so we are still willing, again, these take a long time sometimes to try and make sure that people understand where they're at, what we can really pay. The odd thing is Boulder County has had a mission to try to increase their water portfolio because all of the farms in this area, if it's Longmont Farms, if it's Boulder Fan Farms, they're all water short. It's really about three and a half acre feet of water per acre. Really makes it really truly aggregable a farm that you can really, you know, farm with the proper water water. So Boulder County was out buying up water and they actually bought the water off that farm when they separated and sold it. It's not typically the practice to dry up farms, but someone had already pulled that Highland water off. So Boulder County owns that. So yes, and they have they have farms up in this area that definitely can benefit from the Highland water, but we reached out and said, if we could get that Olenda property at a reasonable price, would you be able to put the water back on it? And that'd be their contribution. And so then, in terms of trail requests, there were three, Dry Creek Greenway to Loggerman. Um, Boulder County's response was that Longmont old, owns McLaughlin in, in fee, uh, with Boulder County holding the CE. Um, and the county is willing to work with Longmont on a process to coordinate trail planning in the area. So we were just talking about uh, the north end of Open Sky Trail to the new subdivision on the east side of 75th. That'd be steep. Yeah, I mean, is that right, that's right there. Which, which, oh, Leo McLaughlin, which is Fuller Basin. Yes. We own a Loggerman, and so that's the connection. Mm -hmm. There's already an at grade crossing, at so Clover Basin there. Drive crossing right there, this is the which is semi safe. I, mm -hmm. there, there's, there's an island, there's a respite island in the right. middle. Cars are just going 60 miles. I know. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's yeah. yeah. a long way. <laughs> an, an, an yes, you can see. Yes, but an underpass yeah. would, would serve the community right. well, especially on the trail systems in the north there. That's so. the next. A trail request Loggerman to Clover Basin request for a box culvert under Nelson Road connecting AHI to Clover Basin Reservoir and the McLaughlin. Um, the city anticipates the acquisition of the Clover Basin Reservoir recreational lease and master planning the site in long months 2022 to 2027 CIP. Well, I think we did require acquire those recreation rights for the reservoir, if I'm not mistaken. But they completed that. For Loggerman? For, for, no, no, for uh, Clover Basin. Yes. Yes. No. yes. He did? Yes. He did. Okay. Oh, this is a little old. So no, no, I'm sorry. Um, the county has not identified staffing or funding. This is. Um, in the three-year planning horizon. So. Good, because we don't need her. Right. <laughs> Not quite ready. Uh, then the last trail request was the St. Green Greenway Phase 12, <coughs> one that goes west Thompson. from Golden Ponds that we were talking about. Um, oh, not, to, well, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, to, to, the, to um, Pella Crossing, the Boulder County yeah. Pella Crossing. Uh, Longmont is requesting trail funding to be included in the county CIP to make this connection. Um, and Boulder County says that they will be developing a trail plan for the Greenway corridor between Pella and Airport Road that utilizes the fee acquisitions of the Golden Fr Fredstrom Dweck properties scheduled to be completed in 25 and 26, respectively. So that's what we were just talking about. Yeah, 25 and 26. Staff will work. 
to plan and design a greenway trail in this area prior to acquisition in 2026 so that construction can commence upon final acquisition. So yeah. with a greenway trail, does that mean that all of it has to be a paved trail or no? The city builds our greenway trails paved, the county builds their soft surface. So we'll transition from concrete on the west side of Airport Road to soft surface heading west of Pella. Okay. Share with me your thought on that. What do you what do you mean? I I'm just I'm just picturing where I'm gonna run versus where I'm gonna bike. That's all I was picturing okay. on that. <laughs> um, it really is like, ooh, soft surface. So we helps my knees. But we typically in that design, um, Steve can correct me, but on the cities, I tip, we don't. It's a ten and three. It's a three foot crush pine. We, we have a crush pine on the same green green greenway yeah, trail. Exactly. So it's yeah. a three foot crush pine. Do a good job of trying to balance those those multiple uses. On yeah. The trail. yeah. Big old trails. Yeah. So are you guys? So these are all sort of in the past. Are you going to be making proposals? That's for what this, round. that's, bringing this to you is for this discussion because the next round is due by February of 2023. Oh. And then I think they'll respond, you know, somewhere in September. So okay. six, it's usually, I'm saying six months in these three that I have, so. So I think we, what we have out there, Daniel, would you, would you mind just kind of, the ones we really have out there. Well, just like review it? Yeah. The ones we, so Adam Dairy is a like, check, that's kind of, they've already put the money in on that, McLaughlin put on that. But we have the, the trail kind of connection. We have the water for... The, the f four shares of water at the Highland Ditch water rights um, <laughs> go with Olander. The parcel east of Clover Base next to McLaughlin, which is 14 yeah. acres. And then um, those are the open space, three. And then the trails were Dry Creek Greenway to Loggerman, Loggerman to Clover Basin, and St. Grain Greenway Base 12 which is going west from Golden Pines. And are these, those you're asking for whether we think we those should still do those? Right. Re request these again, or I'm not sure what. Yeah, I think it's, it's hard because I feel like um, you're, you're getting limited context, right? You're just getting right. like what Dan did last year. And mm -hmm. um, uh, I have more context because I see what, did, you know, I see it from the previous year and then I, in 2015. Uh, what I also saw is the full reports and, you know, how other communities did it, what they're asking for, you know, how they're putting it forward, you know, how many open space requests, how many trail requests, you know, every every community does a little bit differently. What, what I um, noticed is that we're requesting just um, a short list of things, you know, and so take that for what it is. That's what I noticed compared to some other communities. So. Um, so do you think it would be, I mean, given that we don't have to submit anything until February, should we put this on the agenda again next month? And um, It seems like I mean, it would be really have a full hear, discussion right now, but right. yeah, just look, uh, what? Um, if there are, can we yeah. have more information? Um, right. And I think we can give you more information so that you can have a more robust so conversation. The discussion is... Do we want this? Is that the, is that so what the, the stuff that David was saying yeah, at the beginning? Those, right. In terms of in terms of the priorities, like why why are we putting putting these forward as a community? You know, what are the priorities? Are we are we really you know, at, or are we trying to balance it? Are we trying to put six things forward and we're making sure that we're um, pre preserving uh, special agriculture, community buffers? You know, uh, what is the list? Is that what we're trying to do is to balance all those things? Or are we really trying to hit agriculture hard because we see a gap in the community that we really need? Um, because we're, we're almost moving to a time where we're, um, we're there are fewer things to buy and, 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 they're, and they're harder to buy. And so we, we have to make tougher decisions. And you know, staff is moving into more managing what we have and things like that. So, so the conversation should be around what are the priorities and, and what are the city priorities now that things are more limited to buy. Oh, that makes sense. Like, if we're looking, if we're looking like we really need a buffer, I'm really afraid that we're going to grow, grow into Erie and Erie's going to grow into to Longmont and there's not going to be any delineation. Um, we should look into, um, you know, buying Tanaka. Um, or something like that, 
Okay, that's that makes sense. So do you want us to say? I think mean, we should look at the Ryan's or not. I think those big pictures, so you go that specific, or you could start. I think what I'd like to hear is we have looked at our neighbors directly to the east, and we really should start thinking about trail connections and buffers towards Erie. I've heard that a little bit. It hasn't been something that as I look back at the request I've seen in the past that has really been there, but those are the pieces as this program develops, and we really want to see where you put these scarce resources to do something that is strategic, um, I, think, I think makes sense. I think one of the things that we have is the fallback is that here's what we put out there. Are those in alignment? We have trail connections, we have some open space. Are those the ones we just say, yep, let's just go ahead and, and keep that in that late for this year, and we as a group can come back and, and prepare a little bit more for next year? Or we say, we want to have a more robust conversation the next month or two before February. I mean, I still think that would be valuable. Yes. I mean, we could all think about it. You know, I mean, one thing that we've talked about previously in this group is just sort of building connectivity, especially right. along river corridors. And, you know, I'm particularly interested mm -hmm. in sort of anywhere where we still have intact habitat and can build sort of movement corridors for habitat. Um, you know, that would be a priority for me personally that I would want to talk And when you were saying underpasses, my thought for the underpasses wasn't people can look right and left, but I, I really would like, you know, the deer you know, I want the deer to be able to get through. Um, I want the mountain lion to be able to get through so that it can go sit in somebody's garage. So I'll look back to something that we talked about a little earlier on. That's one of the reasons we have hours in our parks, because we know those animals are crepuscular, nocturnal, and if we aren't using those with, with human activity those times, that is when wildlife actually gets to use those corridors, those parks and stuff there. So if you look at our, our wildlife cameras, it's amazing how much wildlife comes up after the people leave. And we get mountain lions coming through underpasses. We get deer coming through underpasses that are probably weren't designed as do you say? No, we were that into the deer height. Right. <laughs> 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 but that's why there's really no reason <laughs> not, you know, like why aren't we building those and then like with them forward instead of us forward. I don't think there's anything we do that in our designs that precludes wildlife transfer or movement. But I mean really thinking of that forward, not that, like, I really like that. I mean, I'm really glad that the city is thinking about that Clipper Basin Reservoir. I mean, because there is so much waterfall there. And right. And yeah. and migratory birds. And, you know, I think anything we can do to and build that and sort of connect it to, there's, you know, some natural and natural-ish areas, you know, on that sort of west and south of the side and then connecting up into the foothills. Right. And see, then, that's where you know, both building highs connectivity and from the foothills up to... St. Right. Grand State Park, you know, like if you're a yeah. migrating animal. Right, and then hopefully from St. Yeah, Grand State Park, then we have that, the Barefoot Lakes region and all that stuff that we don't have much say over, but it would be nice if those communities would start working with us because those communities are getting big fast. Right. Yeah, the, you made some great points there. And I, I would, as you're thinking through this, this is the map in the city website of the open space property. Now, I don't know how current this is, unfortunately. Danielle shake her head no. There's other acquisitions that we've made. Montgomery that aren't shown. Right. Well, that's shown as accounting, but, but yeah. Um, this might be a starting point if you're concerned about buffering. Mm -hmm. And then um, you know, the Boulder County just released a new trail map, and that shows the trail connectivity between counties or municipalities, at least in Boulder County. Doesn't capture the efforts that Danielle has been making to get out to Weld County. And, communities in the east mm -hmm. um, but those are some things that can help you help frame your, your 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 context as far as what your goals are I really think that that might be something that mm -hmm. helps you when you're, you're thinking about this another thing to remember is that we're lucky in Longmont in that we don't rely on Boulder County to build a lot of our trail system for us other municipalities smaller municipalities within Boulder County do rely greatly on Belva County funding for those type of things we are lucky enough to have in our street tax and our, and our parks and greenways fee mechanisms to develop funds to fund our trails. And so where Lafayette might be asking for 20 things, we don't have to ask for 20 things. We already have funding mechanisms for some of those things. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you can try to stretch your dollars where there's opportunities. But um, we, some other municipalities that are smaller might be asking for more things just because they've got a wish list. Well, and if we're looking at things like, you know, 
human life, like we're all so interconnected, all of East County is so interconnected, and, and well, you know, people are like, you know, as people and as, as animals and all that stuff, it's okay to let some of the other municipalities get some of those resources because they can, because right. that's, that's part of our community too. Whether we say it is or not, they're Lafayette is part of our community, so is Louisville, so is Boulder, you know, it's all our community need. So could we put this on the agenda again next month and just talk can. specifically about priorities and if Danielle, if you or anyone else has Speaking other perspective else. that you want to bring to share with us, then I think that would be sure yeah. too. Do you want to share an updated open space map with Crab before? Oh, yeah, that, that would be that great. Be, that's easily accessible or not? I'm, I'm putting them on the spot. Yeah, no, yeah. No, I found one today. I, I, okay, I'm yeah, just looking. Fine. I want to see if the block room's on it. I want to see. I don't have a date on it. Brett that's also great. does contact you. Yeah, I'm sure that the map is teaching me. Oh, it's Kathy. Well, yeah, that's, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Is there a future Dan? So okay. we're to be named. So we are, I'm still in the process of looking at, you know, Dan has grown that position from just Dan running the first open space program before we had a properties to having the open space program and properties to manage those open space properties to then saying, well, you manage weeds, so why don't you manage the weeds at the water treatment plant? And then it's like, we manage prey dogs in open space, so why don't you manage the prey dogs at the airport? And then you want manage ecological and natural resource stuff on open space, so why don't you do it at the landfill? So there's a lot of pieces to the advanced job as I kind of look at what we need to do to define those roles and um, how best we could advertise those um, that I haven't gone out to, to advertise yet, but I- But there, there, there is money, say, there is a- There is money there gotcha. for doing a, a replacement for that position or something very similar. In the meantime, I basically, you, are, you two are covering it. So we're, yeah, we're taking yeah. on all the dance stuff and then Jim Crick and I are taking on all the prey dog management, the mosquito management, the weed management, um, and the, the natural resource side of it. Okay. Awesome. So thank you, Danielle. So the time scale for a replacement is not before February. Right. We, right. That's why we yeah. need to be inputting and having this discussion. We don't need that position right. through this yeah. process. Gotcha. We, we got it. Yeah. Okay. We got it. Got it. We got it. We got it. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. We didn't need the end for that either. <laughs> so no, okay. thank you, Danielle. So I'm just looking at, I think it, when we get to 8.30, we have to vote to extend our time. I think you're right, because it was 9 o'clock on the 7th, so now we're out. So, do we, I mean, we've, we're at the end of our business. Do we want to extend for 15 minutes, 30 minutes? Do, do Matt, do we have someone to speak? No, no, no Matt just, oh, sorry. He, he's a good one. He, no. he just likes to get his hair around. I was wondering if he was one of the ones you guys interviewed, so I no, was signaling and he wasn't. He, he was the late cover, that was the question. Um, I, I, so, he, he's like, I, I forgot. Oh, did he chuck it in somehow? Like, you know, I don't think so, but I'll ask. He, he can talk to the clerk's office and see if they can get him in. I, I, yeah. I think they're just exploring this process the first time. he was interested in applying? Yeah, yeah, he was interested in applying. Uh, so, um, okay. But yeah, he, um, he, he called me the day after the last two months. Yeah, I think that we yeah. expect, okay. extend 15 more minutes to zooming through the next uh, little bit. I move. <laughs> I move that. That's better. All right. Do we have a second? Sure, I'll second that. All right. All in favor? All right. 15 minutes. Um, so, does anyone have any items from the packet? Updates? Any questions from the updates that were provided? Um. Yeah. I do. Um, so, I think this is for Steve. The um, the, the um. The clay soils being moved from Clover, um, this area, over to Isaac Walton. Are we noticing people or like the area? I mean, because it's going to be like people are going to be like, okay, it's February, I'm going to go sledding. And they're going to be like, what? What are you doing? I don't have anything to notice yet because I don't know the cores. It's not a contract that's going to come from the city. The core will, the core will hire their own contractor. Okay. Once I get a construction schedule, it's not going to be. It's going to be one of the first things I do. It's not going to be the first thing. So it's going to be a bit of a quick turnaround. But I plan to have our communications team figure out how to best message that to 
I'm trying to rely more on our communications team because they're professionals and they have access to all these different ways to do things that I don't. I don't do Facebook and all that stuff, so they uh, they'll figure out a way to alert the public in the best way. But yeah, some sort of notice will be important. But it's probably going to be late March at the earliest. Realistic. That's what I was thinking. Is that when I looked at that timeline, and so that would be after the flooding season, and it would be sad for mm -hmm. next one. But you just don't want to do it right in the middle of the flooding season. I, we will not have control over the timing of that. The contract will start taking place when the contract starts. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking. So I wasn't at that point in time. Yeah, right. I was actually looking at that hills where the sunrise stand or the turkey trot, and they're going to be taking almost two thirds of that hill wow. away and then bringing it back. But I was actually looking at the contract document last week, and the contracts are required to do a topographic survey of that hill before they start construction, pull their dirt away, bring back dirt in, and create the exact same hill. Really? Yeah. You make it better. With a little ski lift? It's, it's, <laughs> it's a temporary hill. hill. Remember that hill I in Dry Creek Park. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not temporary when it's like, that's 10 years now. Yeah, You've right. got land now. There. That's box number three. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> right. Yeah, you have, you have All right. Other items from the packet. I have one that's related. Uh, you mentioned uh, St. Green. Uh, where are the Greenway? Your Greenway's well is west. No, no, no. no. We just passed a bond issue. Oh yeah, resilient um, yes. 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 yes, yes. Is that years in the future? What when? When does no. that happen? Uh, we, you know, is this a design build thing coming no. up? Or no. okay. uh, I will be on the team, but uh, we'll be looking at how to best issue those bonds. That's what probably a six to nine month process is my guess. Hire a consultant if we don't extend the existing contract that we that did all the design so far, which I would be surprised we didn't. Okay. But um, we'll be. So that jumps to... right into the list here. Not this list. That is that is that but is. I what, mean, your that project is what takes me away from this list. That is okay. that's not my work plan. That's just I'm the subject matter expert for all the stuff that they're doing. That's being run by engineering. Josh Sherman's the project manager okay. on that. Okay. Yeah. So Josh was here the last time he had yes. about that. Right. Yeah. So Josh. Depends heavily on Steve. He also depends on um, Jim, Jim Crick and Danielle's been involved in it too. So we're again, it's it's hard for everyone. Everyone are such professionalist group, and they add such value. So it's hard to say we're pulling people off to focus on stuff. But you know, we're trying to keep Steve involved with that, but also recognizing that this is going to be the priority, and we have other people who can hopefully help out a little bit too. But okay, yeah, so well, your little project. update about resilient St. Brain reminded me that hey, we just yeah. heard about that a week ago, so and yeah. the updates didn't do you justice. This because I, I was in Las Vegas, no, 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 no that's fine. And Kathy wasn't doing right. so anyway. They'll be better doing for Dan next, next month, yeah. yeah. But yeah, we, we don't plan to sit on that, we plan to move forward on that okay. and try to get the project complete. And it, realistically, what is it 2023 now? 2026, like that's I'm, I'm well, spitballing here. It's going to take quite a while to design it, and we got to build it. There is a little bit of land acquisition to do on the west side of uh, Hover, so it's, it's going to take some work. Yeah, I'm remembering when we passed the golf course bond issue, and zip has happened at, for example, Twin Peaks about you know a new. They got a new clubhouse when it burned down. Right, but there was yeah. What we passed, what I voted, <laughs> what I voted for was an irrigation system. Yeah. It's it's my, it is my understanding, and this is not the golf board, but there are trying no, I, to get a, a project manager on board to manage both. Right, I, that's why I was asking. Piece. We just kind of you know, are we going to do better than that on part? The U Creek so Bingham facility, like, yes. which is part of that bond, is almost ready for construction. I'll ah, tell you that. Okay, that's getting close. Sorry, that was sort of on the packet. <laughs> So something I saw in the packet that I was uh, just had like a suggestion about. Um, it was eight on the uh, item eight on ecosystem management. Is that um, staff is doing bird monitoring surveys at Union, and then staff will also be doing fish surveys. And um, I'd like Taylor to do some more work. Is what I want to know. She's going to be mad, but really I. <laughs> I feel like that's stuff that the public would enjoy helping out with. Um, I feel like that is a project, those are projects that um, are high value volunteer projects for the volunteers and for you all too. So I that Danielle. Yeah, you know, there is opportunity, especially on the bird stuff. If you have um, students or uh, people 
people interested in doing that. Um, mm -hmm. Taylor is overall managing the volunteer program, but Scott, our wildlife biologist, is working with the um, bird volunteers, and so the, you know, and and so each year we we run a raptor nest monitoring program as well as you know songbird monitoring at different places, and that expands and contracts as needed. But um, depending on your level of expertise as a volunteer, if you know everything about birds and you can kind of lead uh, a pair, if you want to do songbirds, or if you're not an expert and you want to learn and you want to go out there with somebody. You can be paired up with them and you can record what you can learn from them. You know, they're, those, so those opportunities are are there, part of our existing programs, but they're not, yeah, they're not, they're not like on the daily calendar for the volunteer events in that same way. They're, they're like in the on, ones that said the ongoing. Yeah. Exactly. So, so I just would, I wanted to make sure that these were part of it because I looked that you had this and like fish, fish surveys, that's like super fun. Like fisher rings. That's yeah, usually that's grad yeah. school. So that's, that's us cool. doing it with along with the state. And so that's them doing it and us, we're, us we're helping them out. We're the volunteers out. kind of on those. Okay. <laughs> we're the volunteers there. Because okay. it is super cool. So I, it is super cool. But I, so like, the state something. might have that opportunity okay. for fish shocking because I, I you know, I, I, I've been out with volunteers in other counties where the state is taking volunteers, you know. Um, but yeah, that's that's CPW. And I would say our our bird monitoring program is probably one of our longer running volunteer programs we've had. That um, I, I think is one of the best. To, I mean, Boulder County, City of Boulder, they all have great ones, but Longmont really does have a really it's a really strong, it's a really important program too because we're doing that in places where you know we're we're, we're thinking about how do we want to develop this area or you know what's going to happen here? What are we planning for this area? So we do bird surveys ahead of that. To, to figure out what, what exactly we have. You know, so it's it really important. It's like my calendar survey. Right. That's data. Data. I was going to yeah. say, that really is yeah. a piece that we don't really go on private property, but with the birds, we definitely have nesting sites that we know are adjacent to, and a lot of the language and code is saying that if you're aware of those plots, so we can ground through. So if we get a, a contract that comes out and says nothing on this property, like, well, we know there are nesting bird sites if it's you know, migratory birds or if it is our eagles and, and Yeah, raptors. the raptor program is really fun too because you get assigned a nest for a season and you can come back if you want to or you don't have to. I did it as a volunteer with my son when he was eight. Um, and so we got to come to the same nest. Um, we were looking at the osprey nest in the golf course off of... Yeah, not to the southwest one. Yeah, to the east, thank you. Um, and we got to... We were... The, the, the spot that we thought about viewing it from was off the busy road, and I was like, well, I don't like this. And so we were in the neighborhood on the cul-de-sac, and neighbors were coming out in the morning and telling us what they saw, and, you know, so it was, it was really fun to, to do that. And he learned a lot, you know, about the binoculars, about the raptor, <laughs> about the season of the raptor, about, you know, yeah. when are we going to see the babies, and how long do they sit on the eggs? Cool thing. Okay, good. I just want to make sure that there was volunteer stuff going there, and then apparently it's more fun to do fish surveys. Uh, <laughs> okay, cool. So I had a question just sort of on a different tack. I'm uh, excited to see that the ice pavilion is opening, and just wanted to see if everything is keep, good. Keep the, keep the is machine it, running like, for the next couple of days. Is, it, um, is there anything like, are you track. getting keep, stuff and yes, things are together, and there's no like, we have been Practicing on coffee. schedule. We revved up the the chiller last week. Um, it was running at fifty percent until Monday today, and the part came in, and they were able to get it going at one hundred percent now, and keeps us on track. The cool weather is helping a ton right now to make ice. So we, we project to be ready on Friday. You can just use my feet. I swear to God, you can just use my feet. <laughs> Well, I know lots so of kids are excited for it. Yeah. It, it's gone, it's gone real well. Um, so, fingers crossed. Awesome. If the thing doesn't blow apart <laughs> at any moment. <laughs> it's a pretty unique, special resource. So. So we're excited about having a new entry set up. Yeah, I saw that. I'm curious to see what that It'll be, a, you know, new, so it'll be a little bit challenging, but we're confident it's going to be helpful. <laughs> Any other questions from the packet? 
Any, I think we've gotten it. So items from staff? I think we've done that on my document. Can I give you an update you didn't ask for? Sure. This is your chance. Yeah, yeah because um, I have a couple items in there. Uh, item under ecosystem management, the button rock management plan. Um, this went to print, um, and I, I had, you know, the more updated update about that is that um, we're well into writing the document, which is going to be four chapters. Um, chapter one, chapter two are complete. Chapter three, we're almost done with, which is the long, long chapter, the existing conditions of everything that was found in the data gathering things. Um, and then chapter four, which is going to be our management direction, implementation priorities. So we were hoping to come to you with our, I was hoping to come to you with our presentation and um, but it, it, it just wasn't there was no way that I could get that done and give you enough time to review a large document so we're, we, we pushed it to the uh, first quarter of 2023 to come to you okay. and so I just wanted to tell you that and to ask if, if you're sh if you're getting a new member or members um, are you do you know at this point are you going to keep your same time slot um, Mondays and most likely in 2023 because I'm going to plan on using that whether I'm going to you know and will you meet in January because I I'm trying to schedule either coming in January or February to present to you and it'll be yeah we will I mean I think it's really unlikely we'll change our time meeting place or time I mean it's going to say yes a couple of times I've been on here me too and okay we'll be I mean we've always met and had a January Okay, so then I'm gonna play. And we've got a placeholder for Button Rock of like keep so pushing I it. I keep pushing it. And I and I wanted to give you the details of why and what is going on right now and how far we have come and how we wouldn't want to slight the process right at the end and slap something together and not give you the time <coughs> that you need. So that's So Danielle has done way more than our contract would have thought she would have had to do to make this what it is. She's really had to step up and take on a lot of work that I think we would have expected um, others to have been doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. I, the only thing I had is, I don't know if you noticed, but one of the first, one of the students complained about the park being closed at dark. That's the first I've heard since our ordinance changed from anybody in the community complaining about Parks being closed at dark. Just yeah. and I did out. not feed that to That's the students at all. I just I mean, <laughs> no. I, 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 I mean, like you, you should just you should have seen the the what they didn't know they were doing this except for the the, the students that are planning that plan this stuff. But um, the the lead up to it was how do you feel in this park? What you know? What what feels right? Like what like what does this remind you of? All this stuff and. Like the the prompts and things that they led to it, and and that's what. I love hearing that stuff. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I, I hope totally it was, to hear from them. I hoped it was nice. And sorry that I didn't have more of our lawn monsters, but the county's the county. Like this is all our community. So. Anything else from staff? Anything else from the board? Okay, then we can have a motion to adjourn. I move we adjourn. I'll second that. All in favor? Dinner and glass of wine. All right. We adjourn. <laughs>